JLL, the killer, Jerry Lee Lewis, once again complaining about women. Uh, he has struggled. It's the Bennington Show. I'm Ron Bennington. There's Gail Bennington. Yo. I'm Ron Bennington. Um, I was uh, in the middle of a strange midtown thing just seconds ago. Fifth Avenue shut down, which is weird enough. Uh, but then six white helicopters flying in formation have been flying over Midtown. What does white helicopters what? mean? Yeah. And people are like, do you think they're the news? I go, the news don't show up <laughs> and fly information. <laughs> they're all uniting. Yeah. Um, if you actually even look at Twitter, uh, hashtag pack of helicopters like insects. In formation, in skies over Manhattan, helicopters, helicopters. I keep seeing six helicopters flying south repeatedly. Can't make out if it's the same six. Any idea what's going on? Jesus. If you search helicopters on Twitter, you will see pictures, Chris. So that was a, a kind of a fun, kind of a, uh, you know, my only big summer movie uh, <laughs> this year. So at the same time, some window watcher, uh, washer, fell and got caught and then i think there might even be a um look that, there they are that's weird dude yeah, Ooh, there they are weird Twitter. yeah and i think there might be a funeral at saint patrick's that's maybe why fifth avenue so all these things were happening at the same time but people in the street believe that they're all together are they police helicopters no one knows. You sound like the people on the street. Everyone is just coming up with theories. Someone said they're going to gas us. I which feel I doubt. Like it's the EPA. I, for some reason, I feel like environmental protection agency is fucking out there for some reason. <laughs> yeah, but you, you got to have a reason to have a theory. White, because it's white. <laughs> like they have white helicopters. But they're very low, flying right over the tops of buildings. This is fucking weird. Yeah, it's a very eerie look. Look at that. I tried to run it down. I tried to act like, uh, you know, I was um, a preteen detective running around with my book bag. <laughs> <laughs> you love to solve crimes. What's this little piece of string doing here? <laughs> and Patches likes ice cream, too. Uh, who knows? Who knows what's going on out there? God damn it, I have a show to do, you know? <laughs> I can't be solving every mystery in New York. But it was like a CSI. I haven't seen CSI, so I hope I hope it was Is that like what a, they do on CSI? They see a lot of helicopters, yeah. I think, and they see people freaking out about it. <laughs> it's, it's a helicopter. Oh, my oh, God. God. Guess who started smoking again? I did. I swear to God. I haven't. Uh, mid-sentence. Trump will keep us safe with helicopters if I wasn't even on the Trump right train. What's up with all the helicopters? There's lots of helicopters. They're fucking everywhere, man. Well, it's the same helicopters, Chris. <laughs> well, oh, one... my God. Don't, don't join in on? if it's going to make you cough. <laughs> You're Hillary. What is your mysterious <laughs> cough? And what happened with that concussion you had? He's very tired. Concussion took care of itself, everyone. Low energy. Very low energy. Very low energy. Low. After he does a three-hour show, he takes a nap immediately after. Uh, people are calling it mysterious helicopters. Swooping in formation. I want answers. Yeah. I'm freaked out, man. What do you want? The truth? Yeah. I you can't that. handle I'm sorry, Chris. What was it? Nothing. No, I want to know. <laughs> Seriously. I need, I need I... the truth. That's what okay. I need the truth. All right. <laughs> Anyway, Twitter freaking out about it. If anyone knows, give us a call here at the um, the old radio station. Eight four four Rock God. Eight four four Rock God. Um, people are asking the news stations. They refuse to know. I turned on New New York One, and uh, the newscaster was just crying. I hope everything's all right. Jesus. Just sitting there bawling. Just, we should have listened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to what exactly? Um. Hey, uh, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan in Boston. Yeah, I'm thinking radiation, Ronnie B. They're looking for a dirty bomb, bro. EPA. Oh, don't even fucking say dirty bomb. 
Well, what the fuck right. else could it be? I guess be? it's a dirty Six bomb. in a row, they got something they're scoping. Yeah, probably a dirty bomb. That's it. All right, Sorry. thanks. Why don't Get they spread out, out then, instead of Love flying it. together? <laughs> um, hey, uh, Mike in Pennsylvania. Hey, Ronnie B. What's up, dude? Hey. Um, the I just checked out FlightRadar24.com. Yeah. And you can see, you can see it. if you click on the helicopter, it's a police helicopter. Yeah, what do you think they're up to? What are they doing then? Oh, I have no clue what they're doing. See, here's I'm what in, I think. I'm in, I'm in Eddie Stone, bro. Oh, you're in Eddie Stone? <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Are you looking man. at Chester Pike, the beautiful city of Chester Pike? I, I, I know the area very well. Marge's Hoagies was in, uh, in Eddie Stone. Where you would get hoogies and chips and sodas. Sodas, tasty cakes. See, here's what I think is happening. I think, because they've got Fifth Avenue shut down, I think there is a cop funeral, like a top cop funeral, at uh, at the cathedral. And I bet these helicopters are going to do something kind of, you know, honoring like a flyover. That was my theory down on the streets. That, that sounds like it could be pretty accurate, especially now that we know it's police helicopters. I didn't know that we had sex. They yeah. Just fly in formation. <laughs> I didn't think those guys were good enough. It could be a Smokey and the Bandit situation, too. <laughs> I always find it very creepy at night when there's helicopters above with the searchlights in the city. That's very like, California. Is it? Yeah, that happens all the time in California where it'll just go, like, the light will go right through your house. Uh, we get it here, but, you know, there's nowhere to run here. You know, in California, you got all kinds of places. Yeah. You know, you can climb up there with the coyotes. Hit the open road. Yeah. If you're in New York and you just rob a bank, you're going to go about fucking two blocks. <laughs> then you're in some kind of traffic <laughs> jam. <laughs> um, how are we doing with creeps for with kids? Uh, I'm going to be there. Gail's going to be there. This is Robert Kelly's show. It's Robert Kelly, Bonnie McFarland, Jim Florentine, and Louis. Jay Gomez. It's going to be Tuesday, August 30th at the Village Underground. So go to ComedyCellar.com for tickets. Now, don't they have a new commercial that they've done? I think that they do. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard it a couple times. I've been hearing it and seeing it uh, on TV. I did not know that Robert Kelly had the kind of backing that he could do something like this. Yeah. And I think it's always like smart when you, you know, pair up with like a jingle, right? Something that's like catchy. Oh, I so didn't know that he did that. Yeah, it's very catchy. All right, we're going to take a listen to it. This is uh, Robert Kelly. Uh, it's uh, Tuesday, August 30th at the Village Underground. I'll be there. Gail will be there. Robert Kelly, Bonnie McFarland, Jim Florentine, Louis J. Gomez. I'm calling this crew Best Friends, the Best Friends team. Best Friends forever. Yeah. Let's take a listen. There's a comedy show, Creeps with Kids. It's August 30th, Creeps with Kids. Village Underground, Creeps with Kids. Get your tickets today. Robert Kelly, Creeps with Kids. K-R-E-P-S, Creeps with Kids. Bonnie McFarlane, Creeps with Kids. Get your tickets today. Ron Bennington hosts Creeps with Kids. Louis J. Gomez creeps with kids. Call special services creeps with kids. Get your tickets today. Jim Florentine creeps with kids. Comedyseller.com creeps with kids. Take their kids away creeps with kids. Get your tickets today. Why does that sound familiar to me? I don't know why. It's a very good, solid uh, yeah. spot, though. Yeah. Well, a good jingle, you know, does the trick. I got to get a car for a kid, too. I forgot about that. <laughs> With a K? Yeah. I want to get a, just give a car to a kid for some reason. <laughs> Instead of selling it or trading it in, I can give <laughs> it to a child. Those. They could use those cars. Um, <laughs> that was hilarious. But anyways, <laughs> you know, it's all happening. Uh August 30th, uh, Bob, uh, Bobby Kelly, I call him Robert Kelly, but I'm being told Bobby Kelly, uh, has a, uh, a five up on the, in Terabang today. And this is five movies you should never watch with your kids. (laughs) (laughs) 
These are five movies that uh, Robert Kelly, um, who buying his own jingles, just amazing. <laughs> uh, but five movies there. Let's see whether we agree or disagree. Let's give. Let's find out the first one. First one is The Exorcist. Exorcist is a good one. I have watched it with my parents, so you have watched it with your kids. Yes, but remember what you guys said? What's that? Boring, boring, (laughs) boring. That's what they were doing at me when I was trying to watch The Exorcist with them. Because you don't realize it, but it's a 70s movie. It moves slower. It's like 45 minutes before that kid even throws up or looks like she's got a problem. Yeah, and then you shut up real quick when during the let Jesus fuck you. They're like, oh, I'm sorry. This is not boring. This is terrifying. I remember your brother going, fake, <laughs> fake. I'm like, yes, it's fake. It's fucking cinema. There's not an actual kid <laughs> fake. that's being tortured by the devil. But I agree with that one, even though I made the mistake of showing you guys. Because... I said, and I remember how this came up. I go, the slasher films aren't real horror. I'm going to show you real horror. Yeah. You've never been a slasher film fan. It's terrible. Yeah. It's fucking every bit as bad as uh, every other movie out there. Every comic book movie. <laughs> does it feel like they're making less movies these days? It does. It, it doesn't seem like, like a lot of movies come out. Options. Do you guys see Hell or High Water yet? Not yet. Mm-mm. I'm going to watch yet. it. I'm going to see it uh, this week, I think. Did you see the gun running movie that you kept saying you were going to see? War Dogs have not seen War Dogs yet. Then was... why do you say you're going to see things? Why well, do you tell you people? Um, Queen Elizabeth wants to give us an update. Go ahead, Queen. Hey, Ron. Hey, Gail. Hey. Uh, the helicopters, they're laying uh, John Timoney to rest. He was the uh, MITD. PD's uh, first deputy commissioner. He was also the police commissioner down here in Philly, so and he's being buried up at uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral today, or his funeral is anyway. I put the two together. I just did not have it. Yeah. You know, can I tell you something, Queen? Mm-hmm. Thanks for being the producer that Chris can't be. Well, Great you know, job. And Vito my fingers be. work better than his hooves. So. Well, <laughs> I have fingers. I just don't know why. I mean, uh, Vito could have been looking that up for us. He could have come running in a champion. Well, Instead, when you said it's... police helicopters, I know he just passed away. Wow. And um, I I ran into him once down here in Philly. Nice guy. And I think he's a, he used to be a redhead. So. All right. So that works you for know. you. Yeah. Yeah. I think all us redheads have, like, signal connection or something. It's <laughs> so. right, perfect. They're all talking to each other like ants. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. Thanks. All righty. Bye. Um, all right. So now we know. That's the answer. Ro- yeah. Robert Kelly has put together a five. A five. This is what he said. I would never want my kids to know what a pussy I am. And God forbid the devil would end my kid from watching that. I would never... That was what that lady did for her kid. The first time my kids rolled his eyes back into his head, he'd be up for adoption. <laughs> so that's something you don't watch with your kid. Exorcist. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see his next one. What is it? Caligula. All right, Caligula, here's what he says. Orgy scenes would be inappropriate for a three-year-old. <laughs> I think it would give us Jim Beret a whole new meeting. All right, so do we agree with both of us? Particularly, he's like a little, little kid. He's yeah, with. Caligula is probably. I mean, when you're a little kid, do you care about any almost non-cartoon stuff at all? Yeah, it takes a while for live action to be of interest to you. It takes a long time before that happens. All right. Smokey and the Bandit. All right, this is what he says about Smokey and the Bandit. Um, because if he didn't love it and think it was great, I wouldn't talk to him again. <laughs> I would think that my kid sucks. Now, yeah, did you ever watch Smokey and the Bandit? I think, I, yeah. I mean, I don't remember a lot of it. Uh, yeah. Do you rem- what, what Burt Reynolds films do you remember at all? Yeah, I don't. I I think it's more like I remember him being of cultural significance rather than actually remembering. You don't remember sitting down watching Stroker Ace? No, I don't. <laughs> Semi Tough was a movie that I always liked. That was a uh, football film where they got into Eastern meditations and philosophies. Nice. It's very funny. Um, and then, of course, taking that fucking canoe ride past those goddamn white inbred weirdos. 
Scariest movie Very ever. Very scary. Scarier than The Exorcist. Yeah. Mm. All right, what's the next one? Smoking the Bandit 2. Smoking the Bandit 2. <laughs> Same reason? Well, he said because if he loved it and thought it was great, I wouldn't talk to him again. I think my kid sucks. <laughs> uh, Bert made a money grab. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? And then Last Night at Eddie's. Ah, Last Night at Eddie's. What's Last Night at Eddie's? Well, it says here, because this was the first and only film I played a romantic lead. <laughs> I was a gorgeous 24-year-old with long, curly ringlets and abs. It would suck when I said, there's daddy. And he's like, where? <laughs> uh, that's hilarious, though. <laughs> Let's play his uh, his big theme song again. There's a comedy show, Creeps with Kids. It's August 30th, Creeps with Kids. Village Underground Creeps with Kids. Get your tickets today. Robert Kelly Creeps with Kids. K-R-E-P-S Creeps with Kids. Bonnie McFarlane Creeps with Kids. Get your tickets today. Ron Bennington Host Creeps with Kids. Louis J. Gomez Creeps with Kids. Call Special Services Creeps with Kids. Get your tickets today. Jim Florentine Creeps with Kids. ComedySeller.com Creeps with Kids. Take their kids away. Creeps with Kids. Get your tickets today. Is that the, uh, is that the same kids singing that? Is singing the other commercial? Yeah, I mean. Those kids are talented. Voice of an angel. Really? Hey, this is a uh, Pinellas Park spy report. Spy report. Spy report. Uh, Pinellas Park trending on Twitter because a Zika case. Oh, has been no. Found. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, Pinellas Park. They said an elderly heart patient oh, Jesus. with diabetes. <laughs> And, and the like, mosquito died <laughs> of nerves. <laughs> they uh, are not giving out the name. They said the perfect the person doesn't want to live a public life. Huh? Odd. That's very That's weird. weird. Miguel, you have uh, a ton of relatives living within a five mile radius of that. I place. do. Yeah, that is that is the motherland. I hope everyone's Zika free. I was watching TV today and they showed Daytona Beach and they were asking people about the campaign and whether or not the anti-campaign ads had, uh, you know, changed their minds. And they're like, what campaign ads? <laughs> <laughs> they don't watch a lot of TV in Florida. Well, it's very nice, though. Yeah. You're fishing. You're swimming. You're smoking crack. You're biting people's faces <laughs> off. Yeah. You know, you're making alligator shoes out of living alligators. You know, fun stuff. Real Having a time. Lower the stuff. <laughs> when are we ever going to find that having a summer fucking bit that we can play? We've been talking about it all summer. Uh, Charlie, what's up? Ronnie B. Yeah. Uh, can we get a replay on that uh, smash, that uh, great new song? Uh, we just played it twice. Can we, can we play it again, sir? No. I can't <laughs> play something three but times. But he did call you sir. Yeah, I do like the <laughs> sir part. To start with love. <laughs> Crepes for kids. God, it's funny what, how, like... That kid is so talented. Uh, he, he's annoying, but I can't stop singing along with him. Hmm? Him. Oh, I didn't realize. That little it's bro like, is fantastic. Uh, what? <laughs> Just, like, the voice was so angelic. I don't know why you would assume... Oh, the, the, the dude? Male was, sounding? Was dude. Yeah, that little dude's great. <laughs> Get your tickets today. <laughs> wow, Chris, you sounded just like yourself there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just proud you didn't start coughing. Coach, make it in today? No, uh, we have Spencer Berger in today. I know uh, you, Chris forgot to tell us that Coach doesn't want to talk about her illness. Uh, yeah, she was, just, she was just feeling really under the weather that day, so she didn't want it to, it to be talked about. 
yeah, it's been two weeks now. Yeah, so this weekend she told me she had to just be home because of um, she wasn't allowed to be around people. Yes, we understand. She could kill us all. Exactly. <laughs> um, I'm not asking you to cover for you uh, for her. I'm not. She's not in trouble. No. We pass everybody. I'm just saying, I can't believe the kid's still sick. It's at, two weeks. At this point, I think it's less her being sick, and she's just not supposed to be around people. She's contagious is the word you're fucking exactly. looking for, you lunatic. She's quarantined. <laughs> she's fucking quarantined. Look how he's trying to calm it down like <laughs> she's in trouble. I'm just a fucking it person worried about another person. A recommendation. Uh... <laughs> I don't need you to sit there and lie. The truth is fucking bad enough. Your vitals are fine. Uh... But there is a designated area that she should be, and that place is in a bubble. At all She's times. She's a bubble girl. <laughs> bubble right. girl. Bubble, bubble, bubble girl. Um, here's some people saying it sounds like Bart Simpson singing. Uh, where was the mm. creepy voiceover saying vacation voucher not available in Oregon? Do these things get produced, or is it just raw? Hmm. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't even know the actual commercials. I don't listen to commercials anywhere. It's a Um, national commercial. Hammond said, we watched Boogie Nights with our kids when it first came out. Without knowing what was it about (laughs) awkward. You could have figured it out in the first few (laughs) minutes, though, couldn't you? (laughs) I think we all watched Boogie Nights as well. Yeah, we did. We did watch Boogie Nights. There was a fucking, it was a, uh, a hell of a movie. Yes. And I remember when I said to you kids, and you were so little, I said, man, these Coke scenes are so realistic, huh? Fuck. And I was just We said, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Give us time. <laughs> we're just little still. <laughs> um, who's the, uh, the guy that fucking uh, Jeffrey loves so much that he's always name checking? Nicole? Yeah, I saw Nick Roll in this movie, and it's like all these fucking dudes, they're fucking partying it up at this house all weekend, and then like a family comes in, and he's up, and he's trying to clean it up, and he's like, just fucking little like Coke all over the table and stuff, and he's like, he says to a little kid, you want some of this? <laughs> and the father's like, man, he goes, come on, man, it's a joke. I'm not going to give that kid Coke. I was fucking laughing so hard <laughs> of like saying... Dude, it's a fucking joke. I was just joking about this Coke here with your kid. Kids love jokes. (laughs) They know better. You know I'm not going to waste Coke on him. (laughs) Um, Just when you finally get that god-awful jingle out of your head. Well, it's Robert Kelly's big show. That is going to be a big, fun show to do, though. I'm very excited for it. Yeah, me too. Best friends. Bunch of creeps. Forever. With kids. Creeps with kids. It's coming soon. <laughs> All right. The uh, the big story out there to me today is uh, this Good Morning America anchor. Uh, and I think it's Amy Roback is her name. Yeah. She had to apologize for using the term colored people. And um, she said uh, she meant to say people of color, which is fine. Yeah. I don't know why that one is fine. It's it's, I understand. I know right away people are going to go, why is that one bad and the other one isn't? Why? Because that's what was decided. We have to. Was there a vote on it, though? Because if there, there was, was a, a general vote, if there was a, an actual vote in an election, you would be surprised the words we'd be using, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but do you, I mean, do you think that she's racist or I made a mistake? I think that she made, it's somewhere in between. It's like she made a mistake, but that might be something that she thinks is okay. Like, I don't think that she's no like one a... says colored people, not even your grandparents. <laughs> right, you gotta, it's, to me, it's always context. Here's what, here's her actual qu- quote. These banjo playing colored people will okay. vote for whoever we tell them for, uh, to. Okay, that's not good. See, it's not just the, <laughs> what she referred to. Someone back in, man, I'm trying to think of what era it was. 
maybe the Reagan era, but they said these people are just looking. I can't remember what it was blah, 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 and a warm place to shit is when they were talking about oh, the. Oh, God. Uh, and, and that one got out. <laughs> and uh, it was like such a ridiculous thing. Well, uh, the thing I think is so great about this one is once again, it's that girl Zendaya who she got everyone in trouble. The first, remember, it was like one of those people on E or something where they, where they judge what everyone's wearing. And she said, Oh, she looks like she smells like weed. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So once again, I don't know why the media has a lot of trouble when it comes to Zendaya. Like, just stop talking about her. All uh, right. This is, now who said this? Earl Butts. Earl Butts. And was it during the Reagan administration? Yeah, it was um, before it was in 76. All right, so that would have been either the Ford or Carter. This is what he said. I'll tell you what the coloreds wants. It's three things. First, the tight pussy. Second, loose shoes. And third, a warm place to shit. All right, I'm going to jump in and say, yeah. isn't that what everyone wants? <laughs> Why are you going to just say that's for one race? That doesn't make sense. Well, the, Once again, the problem is using the term colors. Yes, out of everything. Out of everything, that's really the biggest problem. But yeah, when he said that, I'm like, well, that seems like a saying, but I never heard anybody say it. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like I don't think he invented like, it. You can you can imagine him saying it in the and we all know this one. Yeah, we right. all know this like, one. I'll say it along with him. Uh, tie Hi, pussy. Blue shoes. <laughs> what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> and then a warm place to shit. Am I right? Now, um, now, here's the thing about the lady who used the term colored people obviously no one thinks that she is a racist but in the back of your head you're thinking she must use the term colored people to make the mistake yeah of th saying colored people it, it certainly seems this way now at the same time the NAACP uses the term colored people right yes so are they racist? Do they have to change it to African Americans? I would like, I feel like I really missed out on the time period where the black community had embraced Afro American. And I was I there know, for that one. And I wish that they hadn't let that one go because I think it's very cool. And it was very short. It was a very short porch where we said Afro Americans. Matter of fact, BL still says it. <laughs> I had to let you know how long ago it was. Uh, but yeah, you, you didn't do it long. About when black exploitation could also be a term that people would say. Yeah. Uh, which is always funny to me because uh, a lot of actors who worked on that said, "Who was being exploited? These were our movies. <laughs> we made these. <laughs> yeah, we personally directed them, wrote them. But this is the first time we weren't black exploited. So, um." Is this? I guess this is something that comes and goes. This isn't something that's going to tear her down. Well, this is what I'm wondering. When uh, a celebrity or a media person has to do one of those forced kind of public apologies, is it something, do you think that people accept those or that's just something you have to do? I think at this point, it's just something people, they, they feel they have to do. Their PR people say, you got to apologize, man. But, but yet it does... But yet it does work in the way that once that happens, everyone gets over it. Even if you don't believe that person, it seems like generally the way it goes is you, you know, you drop, you drop out of the, uh, the limelight for a little bit. Yeah, you play it down, play it down. And then you give a formal apology. You wait it out and then you move on. That seems to be the recipe that everybody uses. Yeah, uh, somebody on our, our show said this, and I can't remember who, but it was a great line. Um, they said, is a forced apology even an apology? Which is fucking hilarious and true. A forced apology doesn't mean anyone is contrite. They're like, oh, I found out. I have to say this to be able to go back and live my life the way I was before. It's like when your parents force you to like apologize for fighting with your sibling. You're like, I'm sorry that I hit you. <laughs> you know, it's not a real thing. Right. <laughs>
Which is also really funny. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. Uh, again, I don't think this person is a crazy racist. There was a thing up on HuffPo. I guess Daniel Radcliffe said, "What? Hey, I have racists as, fr- as friends. I'm not going to, you know." If I said I wouldn't hang out with racists, I wouldn't know anybody. And then somebody wrote this thing about how he is wrong and how he needs. But I'm like, if you stop hanging around racists, first of all, how are they going to know the difference? You know what I mean? Like maybe things could start and get into their head a little bit. Maybe you can have some kind of movement. And racist isn't like one line. There's a lot of things that people could be like. There's plenty of liberals who have things that they do that's racist. Of course, yeah. You know? Even when you say, oh, those people need our help, they're, you know, anytime that we don't give to them, they'll starve or whatever, you know? And You're it, just like... I think it's ignorant to believe that just racist means somebody who is that militant about it that they're in the KKK or something. Right. They, oftentimes, it's quiet racism that's, kind of scarier it's scarier and and you and also yeah it's your own ignorance like i will say this about misogyny right boys young boys all the way up until they're men say a lot of things and do a lot of things that misogynistic but it's never pointed out to them and it isn't until you're around people like hey do you understand and you're like what yeah, oh, is it? Yeah, I guess it's so often as a woman that i point something out to a man it's like what you just said is this. And then like a lot Chris. of, yeah. Oh, yeah, Chris, very often, time. very often I'm speaking of Chris. I, and, <laughs> and I would say nine times out of 10, he's not like, fuck you. He's just like, oh, he's like, okay, I see. Oh, I see what oh. you mean. Oh. I see. That yeah. one time out of 10, though. All right. Now, <laughs> he's oh. such a dick about it. I don't. Stop, stop. But Chris, let's say yeah. scale of zero to 10. Where do you see yourself as a racist? What number would you give yourself? Oh, like two. Like I'm not that. You're very low. Oh, yeah. Vita, what would you give yourself? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go four. A good four. Gail. I was gonna say three. All right, three for you. Uh, Chris, where do you see yourself as a misogynist? Oh. You're, and I'm very serious. <laughs> okay. Let's. I feel like I, I I treat women very well. I'm gonna say a one, if that. A one. <laughs> I'm gonna go four again. Four. I'm not a misogynist. Not a misogynist at all. <laughs> even though I heard you say hoes before. <laughs> um, now, this, the interesting thing about this is, and are you being correct with No, he's not. Because I, I feel like, no, I, I feel like, just from his own point of view, this is the interesting thing about it. He, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you run. But he, I believe him when he says he thinks he's not. He thinks he's some fucking, you know, uh, New York hipster. Yeah, you know, cutting edge. Mm-hmm. Vito is like, I have plenty to learn. But you <laughs> now between both of them, who do you think is a bigger racist and a bigger misogynist? Hands down, Chris Stanley oh, come on. is far bigger racist and sexist than Vito. Well, Vito oftentimes has yeah. has said something that maybe I'm like, dude, come on. And then he's like, okay, I understand. Chris lives in a world of ignorance. All right, now, do you oh, think, shit. now, that's, this is how we learn. We're not fighting with each other. Okay. Do you think that he's also a bigger racist and misogynist than Trump? Chris uh, Stanley. The character of Trump or Trump truly? Are you, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know the real Trump, but the Trump on stage, I guess. I guess the Trump on stage, I would say he is less than Chris. less so oh. than Chris. Come on. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's more so a racist, you know, with the whole wall thing. But he's definitely less of a misogynist. He's just was. fucking crazy. Chris, you know what would help if you didn't have a toothpick in your fucking mouth, like Stanley Kowalski. Like I was about, about to get slapped for my accusations. No violence. <laughs> no, but you're coming across. You're standing up, yeah, and you're standing. spreading out, and you're becoming physical. Yes. Seems like you're going to attack her. I'm not going to attack you're, anybody. You're Chris, trying please? to alpha out right now. You're no, trying to I'm like. Just in, I'm in shock. You're like making yourself big, like you're what, warding a off a bear attack. <laughs> This is ridiculous. Now, here's one of the things about African Americans, right? When I grew up, I said I was Irish. Vito, I'm sure you said that you were Italian, not Italian American. Yeah. It seems like 
black, so the only people that we make put in the American. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like but, you, you never say I'm Italian American or Irish American or Polish American. But if you speak to Irish people, it really bothers them that we say <laughs> give a fuck I'm what Irish. Irish people are, right? <laughs> this is our country. This is the way we talk. I hate the way they say everything over there. Every time I turn around, it looks like someone's after their fucking lucky charms. Shut up and hope that we send some fucking more money over when the only thing you have is potatoes. But you see what I'm saying? In this country, why do Black people have to be the only ones who say American to that. Like, we don't trust them as being an American. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why that establishment has Racism. To be- That's why. Could- Racism. By the way, on both these things, I'm negative seven. Jesus. Yeah. Negative seven. Accurate. And that's really science. <laughs> I'm actually pushing shit along. Wow. Further. I found out I'm a horrible racist and misogynist, apparently. I find out a lot of stuff. Remember, uh, I'm the only person. I don't want to make a big deal about this because what happened with that uh, that comic uh, about the towers that Steve, what is it? Run is easy. Run is easy. But I didn't even think of this till the other day. On 9-11, I was in both towers. Weird. How yeah. did you do manage that? A tightrope. There's a whole movie about it right now. But that I type- was you? Yeah. <laughs> Man, a French fucker, French American fucker. <laughs> the balance, your balance is amazing. I think women should have to call themselves women Americans. I'm a female American. <laughs> I agree. Female American for Vito's people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, strangest thing to me, though. Pass me over some of those little waters. It's important to hydrate. It is, especially in these dark days. <laughs> The end times are here, my friends. White helicopters have arrived. Yeah. It's the exact opposite of the black <laughs> helicopters that people used to worry about. Yeah, the white helicopters are angels. Well, load of shit. Black helicopters, my ass. What are you talking about? I don't know what he's Why saying. Would, you realize you're on the radio and you're just fucking slurring stuff. <laughs> For years, we've been hearing cons- the conspiracy of the invisible black helicopters, and now there's a goddamn treasure trove of helicopters in the sky, and they're all white. Do you haven't brought is, anything is, to what I said what at all. That's literally about? what I said. What is he talking about? <laughs> um, hey, uh, Tim. Florida. Tim. Yeah. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. Um, Nicholas Castillo, they were talking about Ray Charles. Being a blonde nigger. That ruined, that actually probably kept uh, Elvis Costello from being a superstar. And by the way, it was something that was uh, fought about with Stephen Stills' band. They were on the road somewhere. And then somebody in the band came out and told Rolling Stone that Elvis Costello said this during an argument between American music and British music. And personally, I think it stopped Elvis Costello from getting radio play. Really? Something that he said in an argument uh, when he was drunk or intoxicated, as it's now being called. That's by, the PC way to Yeah, say. Ryan Rockley. <laughs> Ryan Rockley will never say fucking drunk. He just says intoxicated and intoxication. <laughs> yeah, that was a pre-Twitter uh, kind of beatdown. Yeah. And one of the reasons I think that he never was truly a superstar in terms of um, Billboard magazine. And do you think that was people had that reaction or do you think it was like his peers kind of held him back after knowing that about him? Like other people in the industry, I mean to say. I would say it was both. You know what I mean? Uh, When this thing comes up about you, it's very hard to turn it back around. Here, I mean, uh, almost 40 years later, the guy remembers. Yeah. This dude remembers. Now, that dude just said the same thing. Let's make sure he never gets a fucking hit record. <laughs> Take down his phone number, Vito. Take down your own phone number, Vito. Make sure I get it. So I can call you and get you to fucking be coach's defense counselor. No one is against her. We're all for a coach. Even if we never see her again. And that contagious thing makes me n- never want to see her again. Oh. She's a good person, though. Yeah, you know who else is a good person? People who have leprosy. But I don't want them to come in here and split the fucking pizza with them. I'll keep out all leprosy people. Look, this isn't Hawaii. I'm not going to go out of my way to fucking be mean to those people. I'm just saying. I saw that um, 
Amy Schumer was on TV last night. She spent some time in Hawaii, got sick as a dog, blamed it on Hawaii. We have relatives over there. They're always sick. They're always sick. Yeah. The- Plus, if they get any kind of scratch, the wound won't close. Oh, God. Yeah, you get that jungle rot. Well, yeah, what is that called when... Gangrene? No, I hope it's like gangrene. <laughs> I saw their legs off. <laughs> but when something doesn't heal up, it's like staph infection. Oh, is that what that is? Everybody over there has a staph infection. Because oh. they get a little scratch, and that jungle temperature just... No. It kind of bakes in there. Oh. It's like in Florida how everyone got ringworm. Right, guys? What? <laughs> no. Ew. No. It's nasty. Um, <laughs> Tom, Arizona. Hey, guys. So in the beginning, uh, I have a lot of kids, right? And I'm white, uh, if you can't tell. But uh, two of my kids are not white. They're black. And my grandpa in the beginning had a really hard time not calling them the N-word, but he didn't mean it, he would say, in a mean way. He just would always say, well, that's what we always used to say. Grandpa, you can't call my kids that. And right before he passed away, he finally got to a point where he would comedically say, I'm doing better. Are the colored ones playing soccer this season? And we would kind of, I guess this is a good, I guess we're making progress. Right. If he would have only lived another two decades. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> he would have caught up yeah it was it was rough in the beginning but we you know take take your victories where you get them i guess yeah it's a very strange thing when you have older relatives and i'm sure older black people are the same way you know what i mean they're not going to make the change like everybody else uh, seem, is able to make it when you're in the fucking game a little more, you know? <laughs> it's tough when you're not in the game. All right, let me just, uh, I'm getting back to pointing out uh, nutty things uh, about Vito. So um, what's Allie, what's her last name, the little girl who won the silver medal in the Olympics? Is it Rossman or something uh, like uh, that? Allie Raisman? Or- Allie Raisman. Yeah. All right. So this is what uh, Vito writes. Oakland Raiders tight end Colton Underwood, and then he puts in parentheses, which may be one of the greatest names of all time, what? asked Allie to go on a double date with him. Now, why is that name one of the greatest <laughs> names of all time? Colton Underwood sounds like he's a spy or some action movie star. Oh, he sounds like a redneck. Wow. <laughs> I don't think he sounds like either of those. <laughs> Colton <laughs> Underwood sounds like I would see him on the cover of romance novels. What? What is wrong with you? Like what is wrong with you? I think Colton Underwood is such a cool name. I'm pumped that that name exists. How could you be pumped about a name? Underwood and Colton? <laughs> Colt Underwood? Uh, very strange. Colt I don't feel any way about it very... whatsoever. What kind of fucking name is Colton? It's just very a name. common. Is what it? do you mean? <laughs> well, now I feel like you're both crazy. <laughs> no, I've never heard Colton before. I've never heard it either. That's and there's already so cool. a Blair Underwood, so the word Underwood, the only thing that you seem to care about is Colton. Yeah. No, Underwood's cool, but he took it up another level by being Colt he Underwood. Didn't. I'm starting to believe that you're goddamn nuts. An enthusiastic <laughs> maniac. I just think Colt Underwood's such a cool name. And a lover of romance novels. <laughs> I'm a fan, not thing. a lover. <laughs> oh, speaking of romance novel types. Yeah. Guess who... Is made his acting debut. A little Instagram star who we both love, Mr. Brock O'Hearn, oh, is Christ. now in a new show. Brocko, the most, the hottest guy on Instagram, the dude with the man. Now, what's his show? He's on a show. It's uh, a Tyler Perry show what? called Too Close to Home that I was able to make eight minutes through. And then I was like, just give me to Brocco and then I'll get out of here. Now there's Brocco there. There's Brocco. Beautiful lion of a man, Brocco Hearn. <laughs> He's like the Jen Salter for dudes. I mean, for women. <laughs> no, no, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. <laughs> oh, God. No. Uh, no. Brocco Hearn. <laughs> Instagram. Beautiful Bracco. I believe the Queen is a big fan of Bracco as well. Uh, how come Vito isn't going crazy over his name? <laughs> <laughs> it's no Colt Underwood. 
Underwood right. is nothing. Your name should be fucking Vito Undercarriage. But does does <laughs> Brock O'Hearn look like like a Colton Underwood of your mind? No. Like, do you, is that what you no, see? No, he doesn't. He looks like a regular fucking guy. By the way, if you're looking him up, I just call him Brocko. His name is Brock O'Hearn, not Brock O'Hearn. Brocko's fine. <laughs> Love Bracco. Oh, Love wow. steroids. He looks. He looks like Bryce Harper with long hair. I don't know. He's ten times fucking wider than Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper's like one hundred twenty pounds. <laughs> oh, he is. <laughs> I love Buck twenty. Oh my god, hundred and twenty pounds. I love that you swing in to be on my side no matter what. Yeah, you fucking idiot. My it's like you don't even know his weight. Bryce Harper's a pretty big guy. No, he's just tall. He's stringing. I fucking give put, me more Bryce of, Harper. I get get a good body pick no, off sure, of Bronco. Sure. <laughs> this is the dude that is called one twenty. Look, come on, he's barely anything. He's barely sure, anything. He's fucking cut, sure, but he's no Bronco. He was big at like 16 years old. Yeah, tall, gangly. Get, get a shirtless puberty. one up of Bracco. What are you doing? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here, look. There he is. Look at that. They're not the fucking same person, dude. King of the jungle, Bracco Hearn. Look, if you like muscly guys with long hair, I got a show you can watch every Monday night from 8 to 11. No. No. You don't want that. Why is all your stuff homoerotic, Vito? I don't get it, Ron. No, I was talking about wrestling. <laughs> Yes, I know. Yeah, we but know. You're just saying the reason that you watch it is because no. the studly guys with no, long no, hair. No, no, I'm saying if Gail, if Gail wanted to see more of that type, I watch it for the fun storylines and art in the ring. Look, I didn't even know this was a type that was enjoyable until I saw Bracco. Monte in Wilmington. Hey, yeah, I, was, I mean, has he not ever heard of Carrie Underwood, the country singer? Jesus Take the Wheel, maybe the greatest song yeah. of all time. <laughs> Love it. Certainly. <laughs> Best song of all time. Harry's an average name. <laughs> Colton's not. But your f- Underwoods are a dime a dozen. There's also what, <laughs> a dime a dozen. <laughs> and, uh, who was the uh, football player? Colt um, McCoy. Colt McCoy. It's uh, I don't know Underwood. I just I don't know the ethnicity it is. I don't know what's behind it. I don't White. Know what There's no the reason for you to know White anything. Person. McCoy, I could tell, is Irish. Underwood could be anything. Look, tomorrow's a cheap cheat day for you, right? Get a lot of protein in because your brain is <laughs> shutting down. <laughs> um, here's, uh, here's John in Milwaukee. What's up, guys? Hey. How's everybody doing? Hey. Hey, hey Chris, uh, you up? are just as delusional as everybody's saying. Bryce Harper weighs 230 pounds, man. <laughs> Bullshit. They're padding those numbers. No. Dude, it's 110. Do you know what a 120 he's pounds looks he's like? He's like 6'1", one, six almost, two, uh, yeah. And he's thick. He's huge. He almost weighs double what you were saying. I don't know what picture you're looking at. He ain't hitter. brawny. He's huge. He hit the farthest home run ever hit in Wrigley Field history. Yeah, he's got fucking bat <laughs> speed. That's not because he's jacked. That's not because he's fucking like ripped dude. You ever see a tiny guy with bat speed and, and how far <laughs> they hit the ball? Let me tell you something. First of all, jo- John, uh, pretty good prize class. Yeah! Hey, un premio muy tapón. Hey, un premio muy tapón a Mario. Nos temos bom premios. Hey, un premio muy tapón. Hey, un premio muy tapón a Mario G. Premios. Nos temos bom premios. Hey, man. Thanks for the info on Bryce Harper's weight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to give you. Oh, he's right. Looper signed by Joseph Gordon Levitt. Wow. wow. A guy who does weigh 120 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> this picture of Bryce Harper I found. Hey, do me a favor and fucking put Clorox all over that song, too, would you? Please. I don't want anybody to get sick. <laughs> And then also pour Clorox all over that fucking Creeps for Kids song. Why? Terrible. I think the kid is good. That little guy? Yeah, he's great. Mm-hmm. He's got some pipes on him. So, Zeke has come to uh, Pinellas Park, Florida. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, though, huh? I know. I they're, think there's a couple cases down 
in Miami. Well, Miami so like is where like, where it was, where they were telling people that were pregnant don't go to Miami. But now they're saying anyone, any woman who is in her childbearing years doesn't want this. Holy shit! Really? Yeah. How long does it stay with you if you're apparently a long time? Mm. They said it took out a wet T-shirt contest in Bradenton. Oh God. That's really upsetting. A lot of talent there. A lot of talent. Every single one of them came out that you shook me on that long. <laughs> it's like the seventh time yeah. in a row. They just and everybody's still going fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Capo Mora, Queen! They're playing it again! <laughs> what is that? What is that ACDC sound? Gurgy, gurgy. <laughs> it's crazy lady. <laughs> it's just crazy lady. What are we doing with this? Um, here's uh, Eric. Eric in Colorado. Hey, Bennington. Um, you know, I looked at his pictures of Brocco, and he reminds me of somebody uh, back in the eight, late eighties, early nineties called Fabio. Perhaps Gail should lust over Fabio. Well, he's an old man now. You're yeah. showing your age. And also, Fabio had... Look, Fabio just wasn't the same, okay? First of all, Brocco's got the beard and other stuff. I don't know. Fabio, Maybe they're like the same dude. Who cares? Fabio came along at a point where you really didn't get as ripped as you do today. Like, people worked out, but they didn't necessarily change their diet. So he had a nice thin layer of fat on him at all times. The other thing that I always remember about Fabio is you could buy him to come and open up his shopping mall or, you know, a water park. He would show up if you gave him the 5Gs or whatever it took to get him. So it was on this fucking roller coaster, the first person to ride this roller coaster. And then when he got off, everybody would be on it. He's going down the fucking hill, blistering. A bird flies in front of him, and he smashes his face and breaks, breaks his nose on a flying bird. Oh, my God. Jesus fuck. It's his moneymaker. Yeah. He's trying to shake his moneymaker. <laughs> to be honest with you, I think that Fabio was almost like the Jen Selter of his time. He's a bit of a butterface. I'm going to say it. Wow. Whoa. That's only because he got hit by a bird. No, on, pre-bird girl. hit. Look up, Fabio. And look Fabio. how people are laughing. It's like not his, funny. The chicks that are with him are laughing. <laughs> oh, you're he looks so sad. Come on, find that fucking Fabio. Yeah. Fabio. Let's see if he's a, a butterface. Sexy. Why did you look up Fabio sexy? That's weird. Just look up Fabio. Butterface. I don't know. He just looks like any Eastern European dude to me. I'm just going to show you a picture of his face. Well, I don't know. It looks like a dude's face. Looks like a He's no Brocco. Bro. Brocco's not even a Brocco. That's how hard it is to be. A... <laughs> <laughs> He's the Brocco of your mind. All right, I got to read this thing. <laughs> this David said, this is what goes on in Vito's mind. This is Vito's mind. Wrestling, wrestling, <laughs> Colton Underwood, wrestling, <laughs> cheat day, wrestling. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> I don't think you can deny it. Throw Mets in there, and then I guess it's pretty There's accurate. never a verb in your brain, that's <laughs> for sure. No adjectives. Tomorrow's cheat day. What are you having for breakfast? Tomorrow? Or today? Yes. Tomorrow, I'm having uh, probably some French toast with uh, well, ice cream on the top. Uh, for lunch. <laughs> breakfast, man? For lunch. Go hit up Chipotle. Um, for in between... <laughs> for in between lunch and dinner, probably have a little slice of pizza. And then for dinner, that's a guessing game from now to then. <laughs> cheat day, his favorite day. He loves day. cheat day. You know what I just decided? Tomorrow day. night's going to be Chick fil A. Chick fil A? Yeah. No, how many sandwiches? <laughs> One sandwich, but also an order of nuggets. Not nuggets, actually, chicken tenders. And then uh, some fries, obviously. Are you in the movie Big? Because. <laughs> You have a child's fucking <laughs> lust, not a man's <laughs> lust. Cheat that. Uh, hey, Wes, in my old Kentucky home. Ronnie B., how are you? Hey. Earlier you were talking about the uh, lady that had to apologize for using the term colored people. I have a 91-year-old grandmother who will say colored people. She'll go so far as to call, say, a... 40, 50-year-old black man, a colored boy. 
Mm-hmm. And they, you just cringe. They used to and, say that back then. Mm-hmm. They would say, boy. And, and she won't apologize for it. She says, well, it's better than the alternative of what I could say. No, it isn't. There's plenty of alternatives. Go, well, we could all think of worse words. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the thing, okay, a lot of times people chalk it up to this person is just elderly. People say, oh, my grandparents are like this, but they're old. They're set in their ways. But if you look, just take a look at the age they were during the civil rights movement. (laughs) Is that an okay time to just like, you're just like in your 30s and you're like, I won't learn anything else. I'm set in my ways. Yeah, you're right. You're not wrong about it. They had, they literally were around (laughs) When Martin Luther King was. Yeah. And they've already decided. <laughs> this is what I was taught as a child. I refuse to learn anything new. But it also worked for them. You know what I mean? Sure, they were comfortable with yeah. it. They're, they're on top of things. Well, well, well. The guy formerly known as Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Before Johnny Go-Go took that away from him. It's Hard Rock John. John. Hi. Hello, John. Hi, John. Don't know how I feel about all this. Jonathan. <laughs> oh, no, I hate that. When you uh, <laughs> refuse to show up, uh, Johnny Gogo goes like this. Hey, man, how come I don't get called Johnny? Yeah, and I yelled at him yesterday for trying to steal all my friends. He, look, you can make new friends and keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Jonathan, 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 Jonathan. It's literally one of my favorite scenes of ever movie. When the fucking gooch just breaks away. Jonathan! You're not even a fan. You're the fucking gooch. Keep it together, man. Have some fucking dignity. <laughs> you didn't see him later in the locker room. Yeah. <laughs> you never saw fucking Pat Riley just fucking <laughs> screaming out. Patrick! All right, what is it, Jonathan? What can we do for you? <laughs> well, what bothered you today? The Nothing bothered that- me. No, I'm I'm totally captivated by this picture of Brocco and a giant pig in the water. <laughs> on his Instagram. Look, don't up. be a misogynist. She's <laughs> losing weight. No, no, it's it's really a pig. Stop it, Come dude. On, it's not right. It's the fucking 90s, all right? Come on. Sexist. It's actually made of pork. Uh, oh, my what God. What the fuck? God. And look, I don't care if you wouldn't have sex with her. She wouldn't have sex with you either. I don't like that, Jonathan. <laughs> What? You can't find what it, Chris. You don't know how to fucking find it. Please, just no. Well, they're not in the, the water. water that's the ass. beach. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Further down. She's like, damn it. <laughs> There's a fucking beach. Right, back it out. <laughs> fucking shit. All right, relax. Water, it's clear. <laughs> Jesus God, you dumbass. <laughs> Stand up for yourself, man. Yeah, That's dude. a fucking spine. What? You can't spar with me? Be a proud boy. Um, <laughs> look, there's a fucking peg in goddamn water. All right, easy. That's a little aggressive, Chris. Yeah. What? I think it's nice. He's yeah, taking the thing up for a really swim, nice. cooling it off. <laughs> you know? Oh, to be that pig. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> How is it like that? <laughs> Jonathan, what have you been doing since uh, Olympics ended? Uh, I watched my first episode of, uh, what's that stupid show with the Abbeys? Oh, God, that uh, is a stupid Wayward show. Wayward Pines. I yeah, Wayward Pines. I don't know. Someone else told me that the last ship gets pretty good, too, so I don't know. Here's what you need to catch up on. The Gaffigan show had a great year this year. They're not coming back. The Gaffigans have said we're not coming back to do really? this show. That yeah. surprises me. Well, apparently uh, it's a lot of work and not a lot of money. Mark Marin not returning to do his show. These guys, they you know, these other networks, sometimes they don't take care of you as well as they need to. Yeah. You know? Marin had a good, really good season, too. I thought the best season he had so far. 
But, you know, most people are watching Wayward Pines, I guess. I'll send <laughs> Maybe I'll watch that Stranger Things again. Uh, there's a, a there's a news story out that they said that they apologized. They had to apologize to the Internet for not making a bigger deal about the girl that was killed. Yes. What people, Barb. People and were they, very upset And this about is Barb. why I hate. They said, don't worry. Barb will be back in season two. No. They're fucking up it already. And they also said, remember when we saw the other guy get killed? The uh, the head of the CIA yeah. scientist? Well, He'll dude. be back as well. Why are they giving out their own spoiler alerts? Because they are just drunk on the fucking excitement of someone liking them. It's It's crazy. Everybody likes them. This makes me hate them. I actually downloaded the the soundtrack. Why, what are the big hits on it? Well, it's not. It's like the um, like the score that was oh, written for it. It's someone really said pretty. that they used the same score as another movie too. Really, I thought it was original. Uh, written. Or maybe it was for- similar to another sad movie. But it's very good. I was listening to it on the train. Mm, and I felt like scary. I was. Yeah, I felt like I was in the Upside Down. The only thing I listen to on the train is Johnny Cash. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, by the way, I saw a dance party with the Bonfire Boys. We're dancing with each other on the train yesterday, on the really? F train. Yeah, nice. You guys don't Snapchat, do you? I don't Snapchat all that often. Vito, you He's stop a snap- snapper. No, he stops snapping. No, you I- don't have the consistency to do uh, any kind of social media. You have to be on it constantly. Yeah, I need to get better. All your meals should be on there. Every meal you eat. I do every a, cheat day. My meal plan meals. I bring in my little packaging every day. <laughs> I don't know why he talks about diet so much. He's obsessed with it. If he was obsessed, uh, what is he with it? Obsessed with it. Okay, if he was obsessed with it, why isn't it working? The cheat days things are fucking him over. I don't know. This shirt feels a little looser on me today. <laughs> Your fucking hat should feel loose on you. <laughs> hey, I uh, wore that hat home yesterday that uh, Ramon Rivas gave us. Yeah. I got compliments on it. Yeah. It's fucking a great people hat. said great hat to me. It's a fucking great hat because it is. It's such a good hat. See, that should be on your. You should get a close up of that for your Instagram picture. Yeah. Instagram. Did you get one, Vito? I didn't get one. Not good. part of the crew. Mm-mm. Good. I'm glad I didn't get one. Hat triplets unite. United. Yay, Who's running phones for you today? Spencer Berger. No, he's doing an extra day. He he came in. He missed a day last week because we were off. So he wanted to make it up. This God, week. he's great. He's send Spencer Berger in, would you? He's a young go hard. Go hard. Yeah, like he goes hard. At, at, you know, working. No, there's no. <laughs> there's nothing. Not Look at him run. Oh shit! Look at him fast. Go. Speed. I like to put him in the Olympics. If we ever get a CSXM <laughs> Olympics, I'll have him run against that Marina Mudos. Oh, I'm not as good as Usain Bolt, I'll tell you that. I don't know. Really? I don't know, Spencer. I think, I think you could beat him. Come like on. with I a little run, training. I used to run 100s and 55s in high school. I probably cannot beat Usain Bolt's record. Are you sure? 100%. All right, what did you run a 100 in? Um, I think it might have been like maybe the fastest I think I've ran was like 11 or 12 something. 11 or 12 seconds, seconds or minutes? Yeah. <laughs> seconds. Because minutes, well, you'd be really slow. Yeah, I gotta shave some time off there. All you got to do, you are three seconds away from beating this guy. Three little seconds. Here it is. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. You can approve on that. Come on, Spencer. Uh, and you lean forward, too. Lean forward. Yeah, you, you ever see when they dive over the line like this? Yeah, I don't yeah, like indeed. that. Some people say it's cheating. Really? Yeah. Some I can, people get I can very see mad. that as cheating. Yeah. I always did a thing where I ran, you know, the wrong direction. And then I would turn around and I would yell at them, no, this way. We'd always get a big laugh. <laughs> but uh, what are you going to do? For some reason, they take points off for jokes. Bullshit. Yeah. I wonder why. You know why? Racism. Uh, where would you say you're, on a scale one to ten you are as a racist? What, would, what number would you give yourself? If I was a racist? No, the on you you personally being a racist. Oh. Zero is the lowest, ten's the highest. Oh, I would give myself maybe a zero. Good. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. the, that's the record holder that's right now. That that's the Hussein Bolt of this team. 
I don't know, Gail. What did you give yourself? I said three. I was being fair. Mm. I gave myself a nine. And that's only for Dutch people. Fucking can't stand <laughs> the Dutch. <laughs> and you know why? 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 They steal car stereos. <laughs> That's one Dutchman, you know. Pieces of shit. <laughs> they just steal fucking car stereos. Yeah, they steal don't. cars? And not just the stereos. Wait, speaking of steal cars, yeah. do you think Steel Johnson oh. steals? Oh, shit. I can't believe we're, we're going to lose Snap. you this week. Oh. What? Now, Friday's your last day here, right? Yep, it's my last day. And then when are you driving to college? I'm um, Saturday, the next okay. day. Now, wow. UConn. Yeah. Are we going with you just to make sure you get settled in? Uh, Road trip. I would look weird in front of the other kids. It's it, I a think, lot of the other kids might be bringing a radio show with yeah. them. <laughs> I, I, I might do their radio show at UConn too. <laughs> That'd be great you That'd if be you ever ed, need anybody to uh, endorse you or whatever. What's that called, Chris? Recommend, recommend, <laughs> or reference. Yeah. Okay, sure. both of those or endorse. I'd like to stand up, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I want to bring your next host. Out for 2016. Yes. <laughs> what what kind of show would you like to do up there? I don't what know. Maybe like music or maybe just general, you know, what UConn kind? sports and just fun topics. You do know a lot about sports. What what songs would you play though? Um, it all depends. Maybe I'll play that uh, rock and roll part two by Gary Glitter. Well, that could be a good stadium a good song yeah. and that stadium <laughs> chant. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one from your White Stripes band, Chris. Seven Nation Army. Mm -hmm. You know that one? Play that one. I think so. I don't oh, think so. Oh, 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 yeah, that. Yeah, they played it at Michigan oh, Stadium when I when my sister went there. Yeah. Yes. Was she Michigan State or she, Michigan? University of Michigan. She went there. Oh, they got the new big head coach, right? Yeah. What do you think he's going to do? I think he'll probably be successful. We'll see how it goes this year. He needs to win every game this year to impress me. Yeah, otherwise, fluke town. Really? Yeah. Look, they, I remember when the when the San Francisco 49ers were hot, they were like, this is a dynasty that should have happened. No, it wasn't, because they fucking lost. That doesn't make sense. No, ESPN had an article saying this is a dynasty that should have happened with, with the San Francisco yes. 49ers. and it would have happened if they didn't lose. It's, it's the should have that yeah. you're not paying attention to. You see what I'm saying there? Yes. Like, no one's saying, here's the dynasty that happened, and you can't fight that. <laughs> They're saying, should have happened. There's plenty of teams that should have won. Plenty of, the 86 Bears should have been two or three times. Easy. Easy. what they do? They choked. Yeah. Couldn't keep it together. Look, you look at your Mets last year. Choked. Kill Garden. Garbage. Unbelievable. The Giants have never won two championships in a row, Johnny. Do you know that? I, I am aware. Actually, but they have won four Super Bowls, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, but you spread it out over a lifetime, you know? That's much better. Look, I'm from the state of Pennsylvania. Between our two top teams, the Eagles and Steelers, six. Oh, wow. wow. Six. That's a lot. How did, yeah. How does that spread work? It's, does it, how many of the Eagles? It doesn't have? matter how it spread works, Johnny. Do you ever, oh, okay. you ever eat a delicious pizza cake and go, and how much chocolate is here? How much yeast? You just <laughs> eat the cake. Point. On cheat day, right, Vito? Yeah. Only on Wednesdays. By the way, cheat day, does that give you a chance? Is that a day that you can be with a married woman? I can do anything I want on cheat day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, honey. It's cheat day. It's cheat day. <laughs> Relax. Enjoy yourself. Let me get a little something gabagool for you. Huh? That's how he talks to you. <laughs> hey, a little gabagool. Right? A little cheese. A little, a little cheese. Hill, a little gabagool. <laughs> that is you. Well, yeah, especially with San Gennaro coming up in a few weeks. It's going to be me that whole week. You going to San Gennaro this year? I go every year. Hey, easy, <laughs> he man. was insulted. Easy, bro. Let's just have a conversation. Fucking you fucking kidding me, dude? I don't like that. <laughs> Spencer Berger, you've been to San Gennaro before in Little Italy? Nope. That's when they shut down Little Italy, all block and a half of it. <laughs> Wait, Little Italy in New York City? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been there, yeah. The San Gennaro for that? No, I, no, I went to uh, Angelo's, I think it was called. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. You've been there before, Vito? No, I've not been to Angelo's down there. Let me tell you something. You guys are tired. My though. favorite restaurant in New York used to be there. They shut it down. Remember, we could smoke cigars oh, in there. That place was mm -hmm. best apps. Best apps, best this, best that. They had everything. Yeah, but probably because they smoke too much. Maybe that's why they closed it down due to health reasons. I guess that's what they did. They said, "Oh, that figures." Yeah, yeah. When when you would when the cops would come in, everybody had to hide their cigars. They Sorry, never yeah. had a tobacco thing. 
It was great. So awesome, that place. Yeah. <laughs> Remember how drunk the waiters would get? To oh, us? Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> Which, did you see this? That uh, somebody came out and said, straight people has got to stop using the word daddy. <laughs> so this, like, Silicon Valley, like, tech blogger went on, like, a long rant on Twitter saying that, you, everyone needs to stop saying daddy because it's been culturally appropriated from gay people. So women can't true. say it? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> what about my neighborhood when people say daddy take care of you? <laughs> daddy take care of you. Yo, I should ask Fidget who was the guy who did that. I got to get him on the show sometime. I know. I know he's got nothing but free fucking time. <laughs> she tweeted, daddy came from queer leather folk and no, y'all... And y'all vanilla ass bitches out here are like, yes, daddy, while you have monogamous missionary sex. That was her big beef. Well, what's wrong with that? Big beef. Uh, that's one way to do it. <laughs> I get it. All right. See if you like this. Uh, this is uh, breaking uh, news here. Mm -hmm. sure. Ray Rom uh, Romano and Chris O'Dowd are going to start a TV sh version of Get Shorty. Hmm. Oh. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if Chris O'Dowd is the guest shorty guy. Uh -uh. Ray Romano is pretty much good in whatever he does, though. I don't know. I'll give it a try, boys. Go ahead. Off you go. I know they're doing all kinds of uh, things that used to be movies and not going to be TV shows. One after another. What uh? What else is going to be? Oh well, the Lost Boys is going to be a TV Lost show. Lost Boys is going to be it. The um, uh, Lethal Weapon is going to do it. It's a new trend. Yeah, it's a new trend. It used to be TV and the movies. Now it's movies and the TV. Everybody wants Westworld. That's turning into a TV show. Westworld. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Robots getting raped. Weirdo. <sighs> He's disgusted. He's just, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that happens in the show. It's weird, and everyone felt like weird. Oh, uh, hold on. Here's uh, Ryan Strong Island. Ryan, yo guys, uh, if you pull up the fight scene in the movie Only God Forgives, it's uh, basically the same music as the theme to Stranger Things. See, that movie was horrendously bad. That was one of the worst actually, movies I've seen in my entire life. I actually really like that movie. You're I don't think I know it. It's by the dude who did Drive. It was his follow up to Drive. Oh yeah, I didn't ever saw it with Ryan Gosling. I liked Drive so much, it's weird that I didn't see it. Horrible. It got terrible reviews. I know really? that. Like Chris isn't wrong for you know, I mean, he's in with the pack again. That's like me. he always likes to be. I'm running with that pack, Ron. Pac-Man is what they call you. Love it. Num, 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 you know? Yeah. Oh. Eat up all those pills or whatever Pac-Man eats. <laughs> all those pills? Seriously, you don't drink enough to be this hungover. <laughs> Are you drinking again? No, I'm not. I'm not drinking. It's been six months and like a week or two. I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, if I'm going to last through the football season. I'll tell you that much. Is that right? <laughs> I, I feel it coming. You're doing already. so good. I feel it don't, coming. Don't, don't break. But You're then, doing so good. But you know what? Yeah. He's not working a program, so he's free to make his own choices. Oh, the guy from Law and Order died. Remember this guy, uh, Stephen Hill? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He did a lot of stuff. Oh no! What happened? Uh, age. Life happened. I guess. Old age. Yeah. How old was he? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, 94. Oh. So, oh, my goodness. So to catch up with you. It's a good life. Was it Zyka? First, this, this everything is, is in Zyka. I'm just, it's in the fucking zeitgeist. Zyka so. geist. <laughs> I thought it was Zika. Is it Zyka? I say Zyka. Zyka I say Zika. Zika. You, you say Zyka. Zyka. Look at Chris. He's looking for Micah. Yeah. Zika, Zika, licking for Micah. <laughs> That's the dumbest shit ever. That's the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> Is there even such a thing as for Mike anymore? Yeah. Do people even use that term? It, uh, it's like in a uh, kitchen. Yeah, it is in a kitchen. No. A Why are you licking so much? <laughs> Looks tasty, you know? We ought to do a video to that where you just lick in the for Mike. <laughs> While we sing it. What is it? What did you just hit? Um, sometimes the wallpaper goes up on the TVs, and I always just make sure they're... I didn't know that you could do oh. it from in there. Oh. Yeah, no, I have this remote, so I always I thought you were sure. trying to turn us off with that remote. <laughs> Shut them this up. This is Micah shit going around. Why don't we oh. take a, a, a break here while Chris keeps uh, talking. By the way, Chris, sorry, yesterday was Nick Denton and uh, Gawker's 
uh, final post. Very and sad. They were crying about that. Very sad. Um, but there is a new movie uh, basically defending the Star Wars prequels. And it looks like the pendulum, pendulum is going to swing back against the anti prequel people. We'll talk about that when we get back. Bennington Show. Well, Chris played that song as a way of saying, hey, are people now looking at George Lucas differently? Are people saying that the Star Wars prequels were not as bad? As a matter of fact, this uh, documentary that's coming out is ready to prove the genius of these. That's their hope, anyway. And they're prepared because George Lucas wouldn't go around bragging about himself. Yeah, the, the documentary is, I believe, the prequel Strike Back, a fan's journey. So it's just looking back and going, okay, were the fans the worst enemy of Star Wars? The people who g- grew up loving it are the people who took it down. Well, they said, certainly were the worst enemy of George Lucas. Yeah. And I've never seen another piece of work that anyone was so happy that the creator uh, was pushed out. I can't imagine anyone going, I like the Beatles now that we got rid of those four guys and we got four new guys. Well, in the in the trailer for the documentary, one of the things that said is the people who grew up with the original Star Wars are the people who are like, these stink. But there are plenty of people who probably, those were the first Star Wars movies. Your cousin. My cousin was one of them, and she was very little when the prequels came out, and she loved them because that was Star Wars. And she was excited to watch the others. It's not like she right. was like only liked one or the other, but she saw them as one complete package. She loved Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. And she was like three or four and could do these long impressions and knew every character which was weird because like you are right when what was it 1977 right when star wars came out 40 year old men were not freaking out going i love star wars you know what i mean kids Kids. were yeah you would be anywhere from six to seven to probably 15 to 16 was their real core demographics it was a thing that was aimed to kids and George Lucas attempted to keep that going instead of making this thing as sophisticated as his for, so-called audience for was adult now. Men. Yeah. <laughs> like he wasn't going to start showing tits and BJs. <laughs> now, Chris, you were anti or pro the prequels. I was anti the prequels. I trashed the shit out of them because of Jar Jar Binks, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Jar Jar Binks was one of those things that's the main reason a lot of people cited hating that, that first prequel, right? Right. But I remember when I was very little watching Return of the Jedi and everyone's like, oh, the fucking Ewoks. Like, the original movie was so much better. Right. And I was so little, like, who could hate an Ewok? Like, yeah. I was like, these things are adorable. This movie would stink without the Ewoks. But I see now that there were people who, you know, they liked the first two. They liked the darkness of the first two. And the Ewoks kind of felt like they were meant to sell toys, probably. Right, but there is something, like, the fanboys were... And wrestling went through the same thing. They were the original haters, right? Somebody who was obsessed with something at one age and then no longer felt that obsession because you grow older and you don't feel as obsessed. It doesn't mean that you still don't have interest, though. You know what I mean? And But the obsession has now turned into a hate and anger. Why? I don't know. You'd have to be a therapist to think of that. (laughs) But, you know, the prequels were not great, but no one really thought, no adults, no nobody in the film community really thought that Star Wars was great. You know what I mean? Like, you did not have fellow filmmakers and critics at the time do anything more than admire the fucking bankroll. You know what I mean? They didn't go, oh, Lucas is really a phenomenal storyteller. He's like, 
He's doing something for kids. If you take all the stuff that you probably hated about the prequels, like for me, and the, anything that I thought was corny or the bad dialogue, you could look at the original films and go, oh, I just have kind of these starry eyes when I look on them because I was little when I saw them. And I felt all this excitement. You weren't going. That was really corny dialogue. You didn't right. think that when you were little. But then when you see, uh, you know, in the prequels, a scene where they're saying uh, that she she dies in childbirth and then like this robot walks up. This is all I think about. <laughs> she lost the will to live. <laughs> it's just like, why would a fucking robot it's a droid. say? It's a droid, like, yeah. Why would a droid say she's lost the will to live? But don't you think like so great. Like no. fucking, fucking great. Robin Hood I like Robin Hood had corny dialogue. Yes, of course. And here, here's the thing about these kind of movies they're boy band stuff right yeah. just because you're like even if you're a certain age and you're like i don't like boy band music you still know how to sing those songs you know what i mean if someone plays the right stuff somewhere everyone <laughs> at the wedding knows the fucking tune <laughs> um i don't know uh I don't know why it's, um, I don't know why A, they took it so hard, but B, I'm finding it incredibly funny that now they are ready to go back in the other uh, direction. You know what I mean? Now they're ready to go back once they push this guy out and no one defended him. No one. It was universal hatred for George Lucas. That George Lucas stole my uh, childhood thing. Got fucking retold so many times. And there were multiple documentaries about that. I think it was called Fanboys, where it was just about the Star Wars people saying the prequels ruined their lives. But why do you think it, it was that extreme? Like, I get I get somebody going, man, I like the original movies. These are corny for whatever reason, you know, because maybe they weren't little when they saw it, whatever. But why do you think that there was that obsessive thing where they were acting like it was like uh, someone had like uh, offended you know them to their core, like it was because their religion? They someone else say it. They hear someone else say it, and these fuckers just steal the same lines. It's dumb. It's it's their outrage is the outrage of stupid people. If somebody remade the Goonies and did a terrible job, they turn it into a TV show. Well, you know, they did remake the Goonies at Stranger Things, and it was great. <laughs> For me, it ruined my adulthood. Um, great, now my adult life is shot. Here's, um, here's Tim in Florida. Tim. Hey, George Lucas decided to return to Star Wars for the money that he lost from Howard the Duck. I have no idea why he decided to make those things that he made. A trilogy. But the money that he made off of fucking uh, spinoffs was unbelievable. He never at any point from 77 on had to ever think about money again. It was a billion dollar fucking empire. So what are you saying? He only did it for a money grab? I don't know. I think but how the duck? He had to sell his studio, right? No, he didn't. Bullshit. <laughs> no, he didn't. You're Just... fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, here's uh, Lewis. Lewis hey, in Manhattan. Up? Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, first, I want to help Gail out about the Ewok thing. Uh, the reason why we got the Ewoks, and I love the Ewoks, by the way. They came up when I was actually a kid, so I'm not anti-Ewok. But the reason why we got them was because they originally wanted to put Wookiees. But for whatever reason, I don't know why, because it seemed like he's the richest man in the world. They didn't have enough money to make those big Wookiee suits, so they went with little midgets. And that's why I got the Ewoks. Well, I think that he just decided that the Wookiees had already been overdone and he could add something to it. And why not have teddy bears? Yeah, teddy adorable bears, teddy bears. Adorable <laughs> teddy bears that every kid would want. I was, that's Chris, all I wanted. I just wanted to be friends with Ewoks. Chris, did you want the Ewoks? Yes, I love Jedi. <laughs> You do. Really? Jedi was always my favorite. I know everyone's supposed to say Empire Strike Back is their favorite. But look, Jedi was the best because Luke was a fucking Jedi Knight at that point. Here's what I, my uh, problem I had with uh, Empire Strikes Back. It wasn't a real movie. It was in. It was a bridge between two movies. For me, 
if you watch a movie, you've got to be able to follow it along and then it has a, an ending. You don't it, like that it is like to be continued. Dot, it dot, literally dot. should have put yeah. to be continued on the end of that. That's not what you have a movie for because you don't know what's going to happen. You know, people could be killed or whatever before the next one. That thing has to settle down where that's a chapter done, you know, like James Bond does, you know. That's a fucking money grab. But at the end of James Bond, he's not sitting there hanging from something and you've got to come back in two years to see see if he gets out or not. But that is that is the popular answer, right? Like everyone says that's the favorite. Empire, yeah, the everyone says one. fucking Empire is the But best. you know what, Chris? I'm going to agree with you because you've got the Ewoks. Isn't that Leia in the bikini? Leia's in the slave outfit. Okay. You got Jabba the Hutt. You got Jabba, You got Boba Fett. Who was on the fucking screen for whatever, two minutes or whatever. Chris, I'm going to have to agree with you. Yeah, Jedi's the best fucking Star Wars. <laughs> I'm going to have to say the first Star Wars, or four, is... <laughs> New Hope? Original yeah. Gangsta. I think it's called Star Wars Original Gangsta. <laughs> because, unlike you guys, I saw it in the theater, and I felt the shift of, holy shit, what is... I mean, people fucking were freaking out when the title came up, not because, oh, we're big Star Wars fans, we didn't know what the fuck we were looking at. And then when it came down to the ship, yeah. everybody was that's, like, that's, that's a shift, fucking... That's so cool. Yeah. That shift to this day, like, if I see Star Wars it, on a big screen, still gets me when after the titles go and then, like, it moves in space and you're just, like, kind of disoriented for a second until yeah. you lock in on the ship. It's crazy. And then I, th I think the thing that they lost from that first one is, like... To me, Star Wars was like a real California movie. Like, he was like a California kid, right? When that was still a thing to be, yeah. you know? And the dark side was, you know, America, society, whatever. Society. But to me, he was like this <laughs> fucking dude. Just this blonde-haired kid <laughs> who was like an extreme fucker, you know? <laughs> <laughs> running around and like you're like you know he seemed like he was an outcast but you looked at me like that kid's gonna get a lot of chicks he's got nothing at him. to where he's got skills he's got hair so that one to me was that was the mind blower because no one saw it coming like nobody and that was like the most word of mouth fucking movie ever where uh I remember and I took uh Gail's cousin to see it and he was a little kid and like he was into it from a little kid's point of view but i was into it from like a sci-fi like holy shit look what they can do with fuck you know what i mean yeah like this isn't any lost in space bullshit <laughs> <laughs> or even fucking star trek yeah like something happened like you could you could believe this you know that's how good it was. And those were like models. That wasn't CGI. Well, yeah, in the prequels, he went fucking CGI crazy. Like, he went nuts. It was just green screens fucking everywhere. When Yeah, there were just actual, like, models. They were building but, those but giant ships. You can How see why. I mean, where the he, live? See, the thing is, you want him to be traditional, but he was always edgy. That thing that he did was edgy. Um, he was, you know, always, you would say to the guy, why, if this is the kind of filmmaker you are, why wouldn't you use the best technology? Of the time, but people wanted him to recapture childhood more than anything else. Spielberg did the same thing. Steven Spielberg, yeah. Okay, now I know who you're talking about. Uh, Julia, Atlanta. Hi, I just wanted to say that yeah, Jedi is definitely my favorite, and I think Ewoks are coming back in a big, big way because there's all kinds of Ewok paraphernalia out there. I have a Wicket um, stuffed animal and like a Wicket T-shirt. <laughs> And I love it. It's adorable. So you're you love all of them. You love anything they bring to the table. <laughs> well, definitely the the original three the most. The last last the other ones were garbage, and then the the newest one was pretty good. And I'm excited about the new one that's coming out later, the Rogue One. You, yeah, everyone's going to be excited about. It. You're going to get one of these a year now. Uh, but. <laughs> It's it's very weird because I uh, have a, a friend who is all about the nostalgia of this, right? Like, she was little when they came out, so she's like, when I go to see these movies, 
I think of my mom and my dad taking me to the thing, and we yeah. stopped. And I'm like, well, that's not really the point of a film, though. You know what I mean? Like, that's a whole different scene. And that's like liking Christmas, not liking a movie. And then the expectation of that can never be met. You know, if if it's completely based on that feeling, like recreating that feeling that you had when you were young. Nostalgia is fucking, to me, dangerous. Yeah, it is. It's a dangerous thing. Yeah. I mean, do you ever have, I mean, you ever have friends who just live in the past, like your only connection to them? It's my only friends. Is like, like that. yeah. And they'll send you messages and you're like. They don't really know what's going on in your current life, but they want to like talk about some like crazy shit you did when you were sixteen. I know, like, and I feel like George Lucas. I'm like, dude, I want to fucking, you know, I want to like, do some new shit. I, got I want to bring CGI Jar- shit going on. I want to get Jar Jar practical <laughs> effects. <laughs> Build a star destroyer in real life. Um, let's go to uh, here's Cameron. Cameron, what's up? Hey guys. I'm loving the commentary, and um, it was it's interesting that you're talking about this today because my I have three daughters, they're 20, 17, and 15, and we have had we've had hour long debates about these movies, and I'll never forget the the first time I I laid out and took my middle child, who's the she's the gamer, she's the one who's you know most into this, and and I tried to I, I explained to her what it was like for me in 1976 being obsessed. Remember Space 1999 and all those shows? And you were talking about it earlier, Ron. uh, You could see the hand of the dude who was holding the spaceship up. And it was terrible. And that first scene that you were talking about, Gil, where that ship comes over. And uh, I made sure that when she saw it, I brought a projector home from work, and I hung a huge king-size bed sheet, ran it through the stereo, and just thundered it out of the stereo and made her watch it on as big a screen as I could. And then I said, you know, honey, this is pop culture. This is something that was so important to me. It's one of the most successful franchises in the movie business. She's going in animation. And, and you know, you got to – and one of the things I said to her was everybody – Everybody's got something they like and don't like about these movies, but never criticize pop culture with the intellect of the time you're in. And so this kid has just, like, she's absorbed these things. She knows the details. She's not a LARPer. She's not at the level where she's going she's gonna to show up dressed in costume. But yeah. for me, the, the joy and the, and the imagination, and especially for those of us who are comedians and we do comedy, you know we have a different type of an intellect. And that first movie was very dark, extremely dark. And, um, you know, I didn't particularly like the Ewoks. But you know what? It's like I don't know. I don't like everything on the buffet either at, at the Mandarin. I'll take what I can get and enjoy it. But uh, I love what you guys are saying about this because you're – whenever you talk about these things on the Bennington show – when you go outside the humor and you start talking about the intellectual, I'm sitting in my truck, guys. I should have been in the office a half an hour ago, and they're they're waving at me right now as I'm talking. <laughs> if I get in here, we have a meeting, and I'm, I literally I rolled down my window. I said, "It's spinning, dude. We're talking about stuff. Wait for me." <laughs> All right, thanks, so thank dude. You Talk to you later. Much. Peace. Well, he said uh, that's an interesting point that he came up with. Is can you judge pop culture? After the fact, can you judge it from years later? Like if we think back about if you look at the style of someone wearing, you know, a fur coat and a straw hat hanging on the running boards and and eating goldfish, swallowing goldfish at the time, that was about as cutting edge Mm -hmm. as you could get. We'll never be able to figure that out, though, you know? Yeah. Or you can't even understand. It's very it's difficult to understand why something happens that's reactionary, right? Like a certain art form becomes a certain style becomes very popular. Right. And then somebody wants to do the exact opposite of that. But then when you look at that on its own, you're like, why would you do that thing? It's so it's so over the top or it's so silly, you know, like 80s pop music or something. You could look at it like, why is this being so, you know, frivolous or, you know, whatever? It's reactionary to something that was its previous mood. So film does that same exact yeah. thing. 
Well, if you you know, as a good example, of that is disco. Like it never would have stood on its own if not the poverty of the cities, the fact that people were exhausted from the Vietnam War and and the murder of high political figures. Like at a certain point, people are like, "Let's just fucking dance, do fucking blow." And bang up against the bathroom wall. Like, they don't think that, but that's what they become. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like at a certain point, you're like, I don't want to listen to the lyrics. I don't want to fucking hear Dylan and Jackson Brown right now. I just want to fucking think nothing. And that kind of is, that's the two kind of movie heads that you have. You have people who want to go to a movie and be touched by it and think about it. And other people who just want to see explosions and pretty colors, and yell out. Lucas attempted to do both, whether people give him credit for that or not. He wanted the Star Wars audience to think, and they wanted to be entertained. You know what I mean? But he wanted them to sit and think about what happens when a certain type of um, thought process is forced down on people. And what kind of heroes are going to stand up? They weren't that interested. They wanted to see cool ships and stuff. Um, here is uh, Marty in Texas. Marty. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, like Star Wars to me is a perfect example of how movies have changed over time. And people just need to like get with that. You're not going to have... Uh, the graphics or whatever that you had back in the 70s when it first came out versus today, it's just a, a change over time, and people want to be stuck in that in that era, so to say. I mean, I think that people who love this new Star Wars are going to look back on it and be so rough on it. I think the way that they treated the original characters... Uh, people are going to go back and go, man, that was fucking pretty disrespectful. You know, there was a death scene. Well, the style of acting and the graphics and everything about how movies are made today compared versus back then has changed 100%. You're not going to have what you had back then today. Yeah, what, what you're saying, of course, is the storytelling itself has changed. If you showed any kid the first Star Wars He's going to think it's the slowest thing in the world. I mean, there's scenes where they're just walking across the sand that go on forever and ever. Mm -hmm. You would never do that in a movie today. Yeah, and I mean, the prequels, at least, like, the pacing was similar to the way maybe pacing had adjusted since those movies were made. It was pretty right. fast paced. And by the way, I know like a lot of people like the Jar Jar thing stunk and like, you know, everyone wanted to focus on that. But like, didn't everyone like the Darth Maul? And like, wasn't that like a really great fight scene? I, I mean, think like, Darth was... Maul was one of the best characters he ever fucking created. Yeah. I mean, that fight scene is pretty badass. The problem was he didn't know it. He should have had that thing last three Right. You know what I mean? Like, that quick. should have been the guy because that was the guy who brought fucking terror to little kids when they saw it. Yeah. But then they got rid of him quickly. Yeah, he was horrifying looking. Yeah. But he was also <laughs> fucking for the first time <laughs> anyone <laughs> was fast. <laughs> Go back and look at Luke and fucking Darth yeah, it's, Vader. It's fucking They're slow just as shit. slow <laughs> as hell. They swing this lights here about four times about the entire fight. Um, here is um, here's Craig. Greg, you're on the run of fish show. No, you're on Bennington. Hey. <laughs> oh, God. I was talking about Star Wars. I thought I was running a fez. You're on Bennington. 8677 seven, Creeps for Kids. <laughs> Hello, Bennington. Yeah. What's up? The, uh, oh, God. The... Hello? Yeah, you thought the big bit was going to kill so good. I know. You're singing that song. Tim, from Detroit. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Uh, at some point, I don't remember exactly where I heard it, but George Lucas was explaining the reason for the Ewoks in the third movie was because he had pointed out in one of the other two movies that Chewbacca was the last Wookiee. That's not true, because he put him in that uh, Christmas that's, movie. It, but that's the yeah, prequel, family. and if you remember, they all died. 
I don't remember them dying at all because no. even after that, they uh, it, it they, they showed him the money. Christmas. He went back to that town. Yeah, the town, it was for like light festival yeah. or something. <laughs> light light day or something. Space and and, and Wookie, that Wookie is married with kids. Yeah, his family's fine. Steve, Bama Town. Hey, Steve. yeah. First off, yeah, I think he got a kind of a raw deal with the prequels. They weren't that bad, especially the third one. The third one's pretty good. But the one thing that bothered me was just not just the CGI, but the design of, like, the ships and stuff like that. It was it was almost like it was backwards because it was back in time relative to Star Wars. But it was almost like having, like, a 2016 Mustang in the prequels. And then the real Star Wars was, like, a 1960 Mustang. It looked it was it was weird the way everything looked. Didn't make sense. All right, so you had a, a real problem with it. It it, uh, it looked better when it should have looked worse since it was a prequel. Right. We should have been further back in time. <laughs> uh, it's a hard way to make a yeah, sci-fi yeah. film. Well, and sure. then you also remember that that whole civilization was destroyed, yeah. and you had to whatever. Uh, let's break here. Who's uh, coming in? Our friend Amy Miller. Yay! Everybody loves Amy Miller. She's performing uh, tomorrow night at the Stan Comedy Club in New York City, and she'll be performing this weekend at the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver, Colorado. Right back, Bennington. Bennington is back with our buddy Amy Miller. She's performing tomorrow night at the Stand Comedy Club in New York City. She's going to be uh, this week in the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver, Colorado. And she's performing at the Bumbershoot Festival in Seattle Labor Day weekend at the Stand Up For Yourself show with Dan Soder, uh, Billy Wayne Davis, and Kate Berlant. Mm. Berlant? Berlant. Berlant. Yes. AmyMillerComedy.com for all information. I'm going to go to every one of these shows. <laughs> I put a lot of words in the plugs because I wanted Chris to read them. Uh, <laughs> Chris, you want to do Chris, the, you okay, do it? All right, I'm going to plug. I'm going to plug yeah, today. But yeah, but find right spot to come in. I will. Find good spots. <laughs> I will. You know, uh, Chris, maybe you want to go out to the High Plains Festival. I'll hang out in Denver. I'm all about that. Have you, you know, been to Denver? I've never. And he hasn't been on the other side of the Hudson. <laughs> no, never really traveled. But you're into, like, weed culture. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, slow down on it, right? Oh, yeah. Well, after I, after I started <laughs> eating all those agreed. edibles. <laughs> you yeah. agreed with both statements yeah. so hard. Love I'm, it. Love I'm, weed. <laughs> nope, I don't smoke it anymore. Here's Spencer coming back for, Hi, with Spencer. a lovely water. How are you? Oh, Amy? ice water? Thank uh, you. What a treat. treat. I'm going to ask you real quick, Spencer. How did uh, Amy do when you brought her here? Was she? Oh, she was superlative. She was perfect. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. La-di-da. Really nice and very sweet. And you know what? She was really great. No. She seems like a ni- very Huge nice person. Compliment. Amy had a request for you. Yeah. Oh, Some... yeah. Can I take a photo with you? Um. Okay, sure. All right. Yeah! This will be your first uh, celebrity photo, right? Take that, Rachel. I've been, oh, I've, now I feel kind of bad. Oh, my God. Oh. I wish we can go back in time so that I could have done this before. No, no, no. no. Okay. I think it shows personal growth. It does. Yeah. 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 And just preference. Yes. You, know? oh, yeah, you like Amy wonderful. better than Rachel. Okay. Ready? Oh, it's no, so they're both great. <laughs> so Yay! Yay! Okay. By the way, I'm digging Amy's hair on this. Story. I know. Oh, yeah. Thanks, it's so cute. Yeah. Well, SoCal Bob. Is that what it is? I guess, you know, okay. I'm in the She's... sunshine. I got the short hair. I'm soaking by the pool. How is the living movement? The life. Yeah, it's good. Well, you know, it's hard, but then like you're you have a swimming pool. So like, right, that's, <laughs> that's the big difference. You're like, I kind of miss yeah. my friends, yeah. but it's so that's nice here. My friend Gail. Uh, now, <laughs> is it the whole summer without you? Is it true that there's mirrors on the ceiling and pink <laughs> champagne on ice? Yeah, my house for right, sure. Good, good. <laughs> that was the first thing we installed in the apartment. <laughs> Spencer, you sat down. It's great to see you now. Do you plan on going out and seeing Amy? I know you guys have had your pictures taken together. Um, I mean. I pretty have a hect- I kind of have like a hectic schedule because you know I have to I have to pack my stuff for school, you know we haven't sure. I haven't even started packing and I'm leaving that. on Saturday. My mom's been busy at work. <laughs> Did you get to even enjoy your summer, or they just been working you over here? You no, know, actually I have been enjoying my summer. You know it's 
you know, they give me some breaks. You know, I mean, it's very, it's a very productive summer. You know, good. You good. guys give him breaks. We That's give him nice. breaks. <laughs> yeah, I come in three times a week, but you know what? The days I come in, you know, it's it's I'm being productive, and you know what? It's it's a, it's a good th- it's a good way to sort of be productive and and now, not just sit around all day. What is your number one food that you've eaten here this summer in the city? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, it it can be pretty much anywhere, but. Well, last year, the day before I went up to my other school, we went to this place called Quality Italian. Oh, right up the street, mm. 57th. Yeah. Did you guys get their yeah, chicken I, parm there? Yes, it's really, really good. Oh, my good. God. It's unbelievable. It's yeah. like it's a, it's like a giant pizza <laughs> instead <laughs> of pizza crust. It's chicken instead. Well, chicken crust. <laughs> chicken crust. Maybe it's you could so take Amy. freaking good. That would be great. Maybe before nearby? the show. Yeah. Maybe Quality before Italian. you go to the stand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's right really, really good there. You know who I call the Quality Italian is Vito. I'm like he, he is. is the quality. He is a Italian. real quality he's, Italian. He's very, he is very good quality. He's a yeah, <laughs> great producer, great boss, great mentor. Oh, <laughs> that so, is so sweet. Oh, great. Are you going to be sad to go? You're going to school. Right? Yeah, I will be sad to go. Hopefully, I'll come back and intern here next summer. You know, this was really That's this nice. is a great experience for me. I'm really learning a lot here. You know, I want to, you know, thank people for recognizing me on the air. Um, when I screen in the phone calls, um, at that's first nice. I was nervous, but you know what? Because people recognize who I am, it makes me feel comfortable. Oh, that's so great. I thank that you is all so for great. That. Now, great. who do you think you'll miss the most? Who's your scarecrow? My scarecrow? Like, what do you mean by that? Who is the, the person when you, when you go off to school, who are you going to miss the most? I have a guess. I bet out I of all you guys? Uh, yes. Out of all of us. Um, oh my God. This is, this is a very hard, it's so hard. I can't choose one. I'm. I got to say, all of you. You know what? Right. You're all a team. You know what? It doesn't matter. It's so true. No matter if you're a hard ass or easy going, you're all great. Oh, Chris! Oh, well, you just pointed at Chris when he said hard ass. Yeah. All right. Let's just say who's the hard ass and who's the most easy going. Um. It all depends, usually. I mean, everybody switches though. Who, so I would say you're all about the same though. But you're all very good, and you know what? It's. <laughs> There can be pressure, but you know what? Thrive through it, and you're going to be okay. Just That's like, true. Thrive yeah. through Just it. like when I'm at school, you know, when I cram in for finals or papers, yeah. you know, just try to pace myself and just keep myself going. Good. That's Great. good. I'm so glad I made it out here before you were gone. Oh, Aww. that's good. Yeah. Thank you. I really good appreciate timing. that. I think you're going to miss Vito the most, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I will. Of course, of course. <laughs> I do it. Now, Got it right have out you of and Vito <laughs> been buddies all summer? Um, We have been buddies, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, he makes good jokes with me. And guess what, Vito? I like the jokes. Oh, yeah. 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 That's nice. That's That's good. Kind of. <laughs> but who do you think like maybe you've learned the most from? Who who's given you wisdom throughout the years and been there like in here? Yeah. That's serious. Um I would say I would say you, Ron and Vito. Yeah. Me and Vito, the Ron, two yeah. wise oh, so I know first you've been busy with a lot of things, but Vito has given me some assignments to doing. You know, it's, um, you know, it's been really great. Yeah. Chris, it's okay if no one likes you. I've never it's liked fine. you. I, mean, I, I still, still like you, too. Chris. You know what? Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> I still like you, Chris. You're, you're great. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, your final valuation still coming up. Oh, my God. Please. I'm just a hard ass around here, huh? But you're but, a very uh, good but, one. Just not Thank wise. You, didn't, you know not why? Not likable. No wisdom. <laughs> I mean, look, I have That's to be honest thing. with you. I mean, yeah. I do have to be honest, though. I don't want to lie like sure, yeah. people out there, because you know what they say? You know what my parents taught me? What's if that? you lie, the truth will always come out. You never tell a lie. Always be honest so that we can fix things. You know what? My parents always said, lie to the cops, but not to your family, all right? Don't lie to the cops, oh, no, because yeah. that, that'll get you in big trouble. No. Yeah, but you don't want to tell you them st- where everything is. I mean, it uh, depends, though, usually, but, I mean, if they find out you did something, then you do have to be honest. No, but mm. if you lie, they won't find out. Especially. Yes. Boy, right. It all depends, usually, yeah. Like, like if you're in a dorm room, for example, and you sneak in stuff, Yeah. you know, what? Treats. You'll try and give like. <laughs> what are you sneaking into your door? No, pe- no, I'm, I know. Prostitutes? No, no, <laughs> like alcohol or other drugs like marijuana. You wow. know, students sure. would do that say, though. Right. Cocaine. Some students, Sometimes they some get students. yeah, yeah. Coke, heroin. Heroin. No, they no. bring that in from no. Molly. Coke, Coke, no. Molly and heroin. No, Molly. Molly. Oh God. No. no. Never doing it. Me neither. Never have. Never will. Good. Very clean person. Right. 
who passes a lot of drug tests who gets randomly subjected to one. <laughs> what? You, you Are you really? No, but I'm just saying. Oh, okay. If I were to get randomly selected oh. to be drug tested, <laughs> I would pass fine. every single you one. You would be good. <laughs> I thought maybe there was random drug tests at your house. If there was. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying if there was in general. You would be fine. I would totally be perfect. I would take your word for it because I know you don't lie. Yeah. All you would have to tell me is, I don't t- take drugs. I would believe you. I might drug test. You know, when I was younger, drug test was, hey, this drug isn't very good. <laughs> oh, yeah? We Try need, it. Yeah, we, Tell me what you think. Is this work at we all? We need better drugs here. <laughs> but that's good. And now, here's the thing. You can take that picture of you and Amy at the school. Like, hey, guys, look who I hang out with. Yeah. Famous oh. comedian. Someone you've never yeah. heard of. Yeah. Please, everybody's Amy, heard of God you, Amy. Damn it. Come on, guys. Oh. Yeah. I'm so you know sorry, what? Rachel You're Feinstein. The- I, I should have done this before. <laughs> <laughs> She's pissed. No. You're fine. I know. I'm just being, I guess I'm being a little too kind. I'm going to tweet it at her. Yeah. <laughs> it's only right. You should. <laughs> yeah. But I oh, did the easiest thing ever. I took a picture with Spencer. He was more than happy to comply. <laughs> Said yes right away. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your last year of school or you're going to be a sophomore? I'm, I'm, I went to a small school for two years in, in Vermont um, and I'm transferring to UConn. Oh, okay. But then so I am going to come in as a, I'm, I think I am going to come in as a sophomore because they, not all my credits are going to transfer because at this other school, I think I, it's because I started out in partial credit classes and then I, what? And, yeah. That's BS. Well, yeah, there. because, you know, I mean, they wanted me to start out because, you know, in high school I did struggle though, but you know what? I went to a college that sort of prepared me and you know what? I feel confident. You know what? It was worth it. It'll still give me a path and I'll still meet some people and I'll still have a lot of experiences. Do you I'll get- say this, I believe in you. Yeah. Oh, we all do. Big time. Do you get course does. credit for this internship or just um, wisdom? No, I think it's just no, because now it's paid, though. But Ooh. if it was, cre- I mean, I could yeah. have signed up for college we credit, though. Interns. Yeah, but yeah guys, now, now, right. now it's the law that they have to pay interns. That's not the reason why we did it, though. No, I actually went down there. I said, I need my interns. <laughs> but if I do come coins, back. It's okay. I need but, them to make that paper. <laughs> if I do come back next summer, I'm maybe really I'll do effective. both paid and maybe college credit. <laughs> oh, I say. Maybe. So it's your it. choice what you want. Yeah. You Either or. That money. Both. I, yeah. I think you can do both, though, right? I don't know. I know one yeah, thing. I'll, I'll have to talk to HR about that. A lot of the interns here, I just take their money off of them. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to use it for my Husky bucks or intern. put it on my debit. Wait, you're husky what? All my bucks. paychecks. What are Husky bucks? <laughs> That's the money system at UConn. That's what I call oh, my husky cash. Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I was diving for that joke. Yeah. But mine was about Vito, actually. <laughs> oh, Vito. See, I turned it on myself because yeah. I'm not a mean it's, person. Because it's nicer. And you know what? I learned so much from that. See, now. Right, look, there's That's Husky how... bucks right Except, there. Except yeah. wherever this is. Whoa. Yeah, by the way, you know what? The greatest thing is that every time at UConn, you know, there'll be like a sporting event. I think it's either basketball or football. If UConn wins, there's this place called Mouya and you get like free French fries. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that, it's like, it's, that's going to be another great experience at the school, even though, I mean, I got to balance academics. (laughs) Sure. You don't want to eat all. Yeah. No. Yeah. You don't want to get addicted to those fries. No. I mean, I'm, I'm going to probably work out like maybe four or five times a week. And try okay. to burn off those calories so I can maintain my weight and be able to eat that stuff. <laughs> Here's can you I, tip with a husky buck? I don't on know. Those free fries? I mean, fries maybe yes. I mean, <laughs> I don't know yet because I'm those still waiting fr- for that experience. I'm looking at those free fries. I just don't want change back. <laughs> oh, see what I did to them? See what I did to the husky bucks? Oh, here's what's. Do you know what I see happening? I see you meeting a girl up there, right? Ooh. Oh yeah, falling in love, yeah. love story. She gets sick. <laughs> oh, dies. Oh, no, 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 no. But you get you her, had, yeah. all her husky bucks. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> You're the beneficiary. Are you saying that I'm probably going to kill someone? No, 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 not like that. Natural but causes. I'm just saying from the movie. Oh. Like the movie. Then everybody will like Oh, movie. my God. <laughs> What's the name of that place? But, oh, yeah. I just hope that... <laughs> But girls she that fall in love with guys, they sometimes end up getting mono. Yeah, that's, that's right. The thing. Watch I out did for mono. get mono in college. I never got mono. If I get it, though, I mean, Dude, it's crazy. I got it so bad they called symptoms. it stereo. But, that's yeah, how I mean, bad my mono it, was. It's not deadly, though. You just get, like, really tired and, like, your throat get, gets really sore and all that stuff. I yeah. lost, like, 25 pounds. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's, it wasn't fun. Anna's not sick. so bad. Yeah, so I remember when I I remember. I mean, when I got sick, I, I think I was like six or seven, and like I remember you like I mi- no, okay. I think I had like a fever or sinus or something, and like I sinus. puked, and like I missed like about a week or maybe three days of the last two weeks of camp, and it was like oh, no. color war yeah. that at no. the end, yeah, and I missed war. it, yeah. And I remember I had to go to the doctor, and then my mom had to take me back, and the housekeeper came, <laughs> oh, and I got like chicken soup and watching TV in bed. <laughs> I mean. Soup. 
Don't leave out any details. <laughs> and that's when you're telling these stories. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's what but you anyway, but I mean, that's like the, that's like the positives. They used to be say, afraid to talk on the air and you wouldn't do it for the first month. Now look well, at you. Yeah. You're oh, rocking it. You know what? Now I feel like I'm a whole new man. You are. You People are. People get really comfortable. I'm a new it. man. That is <laughs> true. Yeah. 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 I have like this kindergarten teacher thing, you know. People I found, just feel comfortable. Amy, I found out a lot of people feel so comfortable with you, they try to give you a hickey. You know? <laughs> oh, just, a hickey. Yeah. Oh. Lead the mono. Oh, God. Be careful. Yeah. A bite on your cheek. I thought at first a hickey would... When I think I might have said to somebody when they had when they got a hickey or something, I was like, "Wait, did you get a vampire bite or something?" Uh, uh, and then no, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, that, that's a hickey." Then because yeah. I always because uh, it looks like you got bit by a vampire. You gotta use protection. I mean, I, would, I, would, I would, you know what? I think that's what I should say from now on. I was like, "Would you get a vampire bite?" Yeah, or is that a hickey? Like I'm, I would say that like as a joke that's when good. I go to Yukon. Oh yeah, yeah, you can oh. use it up at Yukon. I can use that Custom joke. Books. You know, hey. Yeah. What, did you get bitten by a vampire or something? Or, or did you get a hickey? Yeah. That's a good line. Yeah, that'd be perfect for you. Husky Utah. hickeys. Yeah. <laughs> Amy Miller's husky, husky. Yeah. Yeah, she <laughs> can't get a word of that. <laughs> Amy's performing tomorrow night in Stand Comedy Club in New York City. And then she'll be performing this weekend at the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver, Colorado. And then she'll be performing at the Bumbershoot Festival in Seattle, Labor Day weekend at the Stand Up For Yourself show with Dan Soder, Kate Berlant, and Billy Wayne Davis. Go to amymillercomedy.com oh for more God. information. Yeah. I'm mm. really excited to have those guys on my talk show. Oh, sure. yeah. That's a well, real weird best thing. Best of luck. I Thank really, you, Spencer. <laughs> you're very welcome. If you're ever, uh, you know, like you can come to a, fe- I do this show at festivals. Maybe oh, yeah. You can be on it sometimes. Maybe. I'll have, I mean, I have a very tight schedule. Like I said, I do have to pack for school, <laughs> you though. You didn't mention that. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you don't do any stand up at all? What? Do you do any comedy? <laughs> no. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe when I go up to school, maybe I'll do it in front of students, maybe girls up there. <laughs> True. Oh, girls. Maybe. Ladies yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. Comedy is a good way to get chicks. Totally. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I used to, I remember when I was in high school or like middle school, like I got invited to a lot of bar and bar I remember I used to be a lot, I used to be funny to a lot of my friends. Sure. You're funny. Yeah. You're yeah. funny yeah. now. Right right now. Yeah. I mean, I used to, I, yeah. And also at camp, you know, I went to this camp called Indian Head in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. In Honesdale, Pennsylvania. And I remember I would always make up these jokes, like I would do some monologues to my friends out there. <laughs> yeah. And How about was, what? I don't know, just like random jokes. It was like it was so funny. And I remember I used I to like we've had I do it from today. I used to do it from T V shows and like <laughs> Yeah. Um it was just funny. So you would just hear it on T V and then do it. Yeah. And okay. they, they still they 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 liked it though, yeah. And sure. that's what kept the spirits going. That makes it easier to write material. Yeah. You know, when you just say it on TV. Sure. Yeah, oh, somebody else already said it. This is then... Indian Head Camp. This is beautiful. Oh, wow. that yeah. looks wow. great. It's nice. It's yeah. Did you guys do like a camp? So my camp, we did like campfire the last yeah, night. Yeah, it was you, like, like yeah, a it's, date. Yeah, it, they do it every Friday, though. We have like Shabbat dinner, which oh. is like a Jewish dinner on Friday nights. <laughs> then we have campfire where everybody just gets together. And you know what? It's It was it's a really time. great experience. You take a date, though? You ask a girl to go to the campfire with you? No. that's No, you go with the group, though. It's different. It's a group. I didn't go with a group yeah, yeah well, it was a great sure. experience i know when uh i uh i went up to a uh, camp none of the kids liked me and then the guy that used to do the announcements like a little radio show he let me hang out with him and we would play cards for peanuts and stuff like What's that name of, what was the name of your camp it was meatballs and oh, uh, meatballs. oh. then they used to call me woody woody the wabbit and oh, I ended up oh winning. you're so fast i mean yeah. you were a really good oh, track star that's because i was so small i could get underneath the trees sure. and stuff speaking I of meatballs saw, didn't i see you walking around with a sombrero full of peanuts yeah sure anybody would be happy if they <laughs> had a sombrero by the way static with a speaking of meatballs full of peanuts <laughs> yes speaking of meatballs oh crap Crap, why do I have to stack the dishes again? I don't have the energy. I'm weak, I tell you. I'm weak from hunger. That's it's good. like, you know, it was weird. It's like in the dining hall, you have to do like this game. Like the last person who does this or does this or this have to stack. Has, they have to stack plates and then they have to sponge the tables. And like, wow. I didn't realize that it, they do it in a lot of other places when yeah. I, until I saw that scene. Yeah. It's like, they did yeah, it wow. When I was there. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's, I a typical, stack. that's like a typical camp. Um game or like a typical you know punishment Camp game Marines. <laughs> yeah. something like that yeah Camp. yeah <laughs> yeah did you have to do the stacking a lot yeah i used to yeah i remember when they did this no one would tell me uh, that i would be the last person attention. i would have to keep sponging yeah no one told me i mean it's keep so hard sponging. like the counselors up front i'm sitting like on the side next to all the kids there i remember that it was just i was like oh we did God. that with a kid at our camp he came back with an automatic weapon oh my yeah. gosh yeah, different so... times 
Yeah, different times. It's terrible. Well, whatever. You know, it was fun. You're a kid, so you don't mind. <laughs> in the old days. Yeah. I'm so glad we don't have random shootings anymore. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. knock on Thank wood. Don't even mention that. Yes. Don't mention that. Yes. All right. We have to talk about it or it won't be. Well, shootings, <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else. Somewhere else. Well, I always pray it takes place in Alabama. That's my prayer. No. Every night. I, I don't even want shootings to occur at all. That's good. That's I mean, better. look at look look look, look <laughs> at 2016. There's like so many fatalities. There's there's like shootings all over this year. What about when like last year? The Nazis, Spencer. <laughs> That's different. That's a different story, though. They had to do that because they were bad people. Yeah. A bad person kills innocent people. <laughs> and a good person. Kills, kills bad people for bad revenge. People. That's and I mean, a great that's different. person kills good people. <laughs> Wait, or a I'm bad person confused. kills a bad that's people. That's how yeah. they become great. Yeah. <laughs> so to me, a good Nazi is a Nazi who rounds up Nazis. Yeah, uh-huh. and puts them you in know? Nazi camps. Mm. Yeah, oh. adorable Where little Nazi. They have to stack. <laughs> Damn. I have to round up the Nazis again. <laughs> oh I don't my have the God. energy Auschwitz. to tell you. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's that's gross too close. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm smart against Vito's you. Oh, my God. Vito's a Vito's mess, Vito's mess in there. <laughs> What's happening? He's a mess in there. Okay, I think we got to take it easy on him. We're, yeah. we're yeah. sort he's, of... Yeah. You guys are silly in here today. Yeah, we're riffing. Well, you know, you know what? It's the end of the summer. You know? We're all heading home soon. It's wrapping up. Yeah. We learned a lot, Tam. Yeah, we're all getting paid in husky dollars this week. <laughs> oh husky no, I'm bucks. sorry. I wish it could be for you, but it's got to be for me, though. It's got to be your husky dollars. Yeah, Some and I think, cry. and actually, I think I told you there was a story at UConn where there was this kid who got drunk and went to the union, <laughs> and he actually got mac. He actually wanted to get mac and cheese. Um, oh, I, think, I saw that on the oh, internet. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. Seen that he was before. like, he, oh, that was at they denied him service. Yeah, because yeah. they that was great. apparently he, was he so had great. he had a, he had a beer bottle and they denied him service at UConn. And you know what? It wasn't. You know what? What they did? What he did was he, he was abusive to the manager and he didn't listen. He pushed and shoved the manager <laughs> and apparently one of the workers shoved him on the ground you know, and then he got, got arrested. You get hungry when you drink. Would What's you the Would you do that if you were up there? I mean, I would drink though, but with but with responsible manners. <laughs> That's so, yeah, be very so responsible good. where you are. Never responsibly. Never drink in any public place because then well, that's where you'll get into big trouble. Well, Drinking well, alone, I thought was bad. Don't drink alone at home. <laughs> <laughs> yourself in the dark. Yeah, don't, don't ever. My final days of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going out. Staying in here. Drink in public. Yeah. If you hey Chris, yeah, if you'll fast forward the video, it'll be like at the end there. Oh, okay, Chris, yeah, please. Okay. Chris, goddamn it. Yeah, show it to us. Yeah, you can just like fast forward a little bit because. Claim you're a producer, but. Oh, I'm coming up here. All right, here he is. Here's the kid getting pissed. He wants that mac and cheese so much. You'll see. That kid's cool. Hey, he's cool. I like how he wears his jammies. You can do that in college. Yep. Just be in your sweats all the time. Exactly. So Chris must be in college. He's been, <laughs> he's been studying like he's a lot. College lifestyle. <laughs> You're a doctor, are you, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Still an undergrad. <laughs> he, maybe he ran out of husky bucks. Oh, oh there he goes. husky bucks got strong. Yeah, there he goes. Husky bucks. Husky, husky bucks. Husky bucks. Husky bucks. Are you going to that school? It seems tough. It's dangerous, Spencer. <laughs> Yeah, what yeah. he did was stupid. Right. Yeah, but look Just at look how at that. Yeah, but look at how tough the cooks are. <laughs> Spencer, if this cooks? goes down, I want you to stay out of it, okay? Oh yeah, if this stuff like that happens, I'm taking action right away. Your, no, don't take action. <laughs> no, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call nine one one. Oh, okay, okay. And then oh, run to your much. room. I mean, yeah. I'm trying. I want to try and be a hero there. <laughs> No, don't be a hero. Be a hero. Why not? The hero is called 911. <laughs> it's dangerous. That's why I always say 911. I mean, I still want to try well, though. Calm down. Like Steve yeah. ran is easy. Yes. <laughs> he called 911. That was like last year in October. <laughs> Steve ran is easy. <laughs> That's it. It's over. Yeah. You, what would you do if you see that kid up there? Oh, he! I bet you he's not coming back. He, I think yeah. he got expelled. But if I see him again, you know what? I would stay the fuck away from him. You well, wouldn't well. tell him what he did was wrong? No, I wouldn't even talk to that kid. You should I probably would up. never talk to a kid like that. Why don't you just say this? What's shaking, daddy-o? No. Yeah. No, because then I'll, they're going to think I'm nuts. Because if, <laughs> no, if, if, yeah. if I be if I be friends with that fool or try to talk to him, <laughs> people there probably wouldn't even talk to me. No way. I would be, so not do that. I could see you being friends with the beatniks. Beatniks? Yeah, yeah. definitely. They're into poetry. Oh, 
A lot of turtlenecks. Mm-hmm. Turtlenecks are sitting around. Smoke they're drumming cigarettes. all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <I miss you. laughs> uh, do you have any friends up there, Spencer? At UConn, I think maybe like two people from like my high school went there, and plus yeah. my roommate from my previous school, he knows a bunch of people there at UConn. So I'm trying to get their Facebook and information from you, my roommate. You gonna put up a poster in your room? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sports yep. posters, oh, yeah. my New York Giants posters, my Carmelo Anthony, Eli Manning, Matt Harvey posters. Now, if you want to get really classy for the girls, at for actually, college. I also what I can also do is <laughs> I could probably put maybe put a little a chalkboard on my door so that people can write on the wall there. Or you know what? I also have I also have that um, when we went to Punta Cana, they had this like they had this sign right. called Sweet Wall well, before. Before, um, what they do is they put the names of like different people staying in that room. For example, like they one said like "sweet prostitute" or "sweet hooker." That's what it was. Oh, oh yeah. And then, um, then it said "sweet burger." Then and I think I still have the sign though, so maybe you I'll put gotta, it up in yeah, front of my door. Yeah, get that up. I'll yeah, probably put that up. Sweet burger. Sweet burger. I'm yeah. You gotta go framed posters. Yeah, that would be great. Thumbtacks or that gummy. Yeah, stuff. like the, the thumbtacks. Yeah, or putty. Whatever. No, that. no. Put them in a frame. <laughs> oh yeah. Then you'll. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. Oh, That's yeah. how yeah. the ladies will know you're like more mature than the other. Oh, okay. Sorry, put like a thumb. T- okay. <laughs> no, put him in a frame. Okay. <laughs> He's not getting any of this. The, uh, I'm just trying to give you advice. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. I said okay, I will. <laughs> She's performing Chris. tomorrow night at the stand, the comedy club. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Great, Chris. Oh, I'll take your advice. And try to fit it in, Chris. <laughs> She's performing this weekend at the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver, Colorado, and then she, on Labor Day weekend she'll be at the Bumber Shoot Festival in Seattle at the Stand Up for Yourself show with Dan Soder, Kate Berlant, and Billy Wayne Davis. Go to AmyMillerComedy.com for more information. Technically, it's called Stand Up for Yourself with Amy Miller. Right. Yeah, that's Girl, right. Get, so, get that name in there. Well, Just get that to, out there. Not okay. take that out next time. <laughs> so what happens on this show? That you do? Uh, so I, it's very silly. Um, I, I do like this. Comics will do seven minutes of stand up and then they sit down for like some therapy <laughs> for me, Eating who is not a doctor. <laughs> um, and we play games and stuff. It's sort of like morning TV show style, which I'm, I've am i always been super obsessed with. All right, why don't you do it with Spencer? We can see how you would help Spencer. If he's, <clears throat> you got any questions, you need any advice, Spencer, before school? Anything you're nervous about or yeah, curious about? What are your about? big worries going um, into I mean, UConn? I mean... I mean, I could first tell you the positives, what I'm excited about. I mean, Good. I'm living in their new dorm, Focus on the positive. next gen hall, huge, next gen hall. I'm living step. on the eighth floor and I have a single, no roommate. Mm-hmm. Probably going to get one maybe oh. next semester or maybe year after. So do you think for adjusting that not having a roommate will be more difficult? I mean, yeah, that's what I thought, though. But they said, like, I'll be be- I'm going to be better off be- starting out as a single because I won't know anybody there yet. They told you that? Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, because I mean, I got like special accommodations though, but like I'll still probably meet, I'll still meet people in the dorm room or like in my classes or at a club. And, um. You're not worried you'll get a little bit lonely in that single? I mean, I don't think I might be lonely. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, do you like I mean, to I'm have control over your environment? Because then Sometimes, you'll get to pick yeah. all the posters and stuff. No, I mean, I want, I mean, I do want people to see my posters whenever they come in my room. I mean, I'm sure that there will be people that'll probably come in my room though. And I'm also like excited to be, you know, on a bigger campus, you know, being involved, meeting other people there, and because that will so happen. Though there's nothing that it sounds like you got it all together. I mean, yeah, nothing and here's, worried about. Yeah, no but here's the negatives. Needed. No, here's the now. Here's the negatives. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I am worried about my classes, though. I mean, I want to sure. try and you know work, do the best I can, though, and just you know put a lot of time in because I don't want to get like distracted, distracted by all the stuff on campus. You know, there's this acronym called FOMO, fear of missing out. I'm sure you're all familiar with that term. Yes, I've had it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because oh, that's what I think I might didn't find out, and I think I Because then I don't want to, like, no, miss no, no, and right. study, like, last minute for my exams. Because I know if you fail, though, I don't want to fail or be put on probation. Because then I'm going to I'm gonna probably get pulled out, though. So it sounds like you're maybe worried about finding balance between yeah, I mean, I, I, I will find balance, though. I mean, study. they do have support that will help me, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, control. yeah, just... Can I give you my thing that always helped during a test? I'd look over and see how the other people are doing. What's on their paper? Oh, see scary. if I can. Oh, if I get idea. caught cheating, oh, I would be absolutely screwed. Yeah, because that's also I'm well, sure no, any college campus is policy. Yeah, because <laughs> then if I get caught, then I'm probably going to get thrown out of out of school. That when I did my happen. reports, you know what they used to call me? Cut and paste. 
cut and paste. I just cut and paste. You did not. Oh, don't tell yeah. me you plagiarized. <laughs> don't tell oh, me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> did you actually plagiarize something? Yeah. Did you paste this <laughs> you plagiarized? from a book from the library? No. Like, we don't have the internet. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what is the internet? You did not. <laughs> oh, my God. Is it? Yeah. Did you actually plagiarize? Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't, I don't believe that. I'll tell you something. Uh, can I tell you one of my fears for you? And maybe Amy can help you with it. I'm worried that you're going to wake up and have nothing but busky huts. And you'll be like, busky these are huts. the exact opposite. No, what am I doing with busky huts? No. I need a husky and also there, And no also they have good ice cream busky. there because, you know, you're right oh. by a farm there. Okay. Oh. Yeah. You just, it's gonna be great. they won't give you the ice cream or the mac and cheese, please don't lose it. Then, you know, you know? I'll say then... then f- well, if that happens to me, you know, I'll say, okay, then do you want me to, then can I come back tomorrow or another time? That's All right, great. Fine, then look, Good. I'm sorry Very that this respectful. happened, but like, Good. otherwise, right. if they still, if, well, first I'll say, look, I'm sorry that this happened, but just, are you, sh- why can't I? But it, it's good to show your dissatisfaction. For yeah, sure. because yeah. Did you learn that from your mother? Maybe no, a little I, bit? I maybe, but I know about what, what to bit. try to work though. Yeah. 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 So I would say then, like, Did look, why? I mean, that, why like, can't? I mean, then can I come back tomorrow? See, so, yeah, I come back tomorrow. I was like, okay, look, but I am sorry if whatever I did was wrong because then I'll because what that kid did was he didn't even apologize. He was clueless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I see him like a goofus and gallon of Yukon. Yeah, that's the thing. When people get drunk, when people get drunk, they don't remember. And that kid was drunk and he put a a YouTube video of his apology up and didn't even remember what happened. And then when he saw the video, and there was another video, (laughs) I'm sure. I hate remembering. (laughs) I'm sorry. There was another video. Well, hold on. Was there another video? Uh, No, but it's a different story. Another (laughs) video is about an an Uber passenger that was drunk and um, didn't give him didn't give him the directions properly so he kicked him out and then all of a sudden yeah he was the marketing manager from taco bell (laughs) he like he he hit he hit the uber driver assaulted him and he got arrested and fired Oh, well, you know what this bad. is called yeah. is when you're yeah, hang- it's hangry. Don't you ever get a little bit hangry? Something like that. I, I get know. that bad. It all yeah, depends usually, so. yeah. Really bad. I have it soon. <laughs> and I get had. <laughs> and he doesn't even remember what happened. FOMO. Three to four hours. <laughs> FOMO, FOMO is like, FOMO. like, hangry is like FOMO, but for you. Yeah. Well, ha- FOMO, that's mostly fear of missing out. Yeah, yeah. It's mainly. Missing out on some mac and cheese. <laughs> so you get yeah. FOMO, you don't want to miss stuff? I mean, usually, it all depends. Usually, like, if it's a basketball game or a football game. Then, like, yeah. if if I, if there, if it, if UConn was playing Michigan or Maryland, Syracuse or Florida or Tulane, those are the games That's to go to. That's a lot of games yeah. you can't miss. Yeah. Yeah. But That's like, so but if they're playing like Maine or West Virginia or New fuck Hampshire, it. then yeah, fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, it's not as important it's though. It's not so as big. So watching it, I'm sure on TV though is yeah. still a good is still a good opportunity. What though, steps too. are you going to take to keep this balanced life between your studies? Um, well, and what I'm what I'm planning on doing is that um, well, I'm gonna well usually Sunday. Through Thursday will pretty much be my working nights. Well, Sunday I'll be in the library probably from like maybe one o'clock, go to dinner and then finish up maybe at like seven o'clock. Mm, Friday, and Saturday, then, is party and then Monday, th- Monday, Thursday, yeah. Monday through Thursday, library from like six thirty to like maybe eleven or twelve o'clock. Mm. And then Friday I'll work a little bit and then go out to party. Yeah. Saturday work during the morning, stop in the afternoon, work out and morning then morning studies. Maybe maybe from like twelve, maybe to like maybe four o'clock. And then go out and party at, at night. Now, yeah. are you worried about living by yourself because you won't have this accountability? I mean, yeah, of I, mean, I mean, yeah, that I'm a little worried about. I mean, not to protect you, but like, I don't want to be like isolated. And that's yeah. like what I said. And they said, yeah. no, you'll meet people there. But I mean, I, I pretty much believe them. And you know what? I mean, there were, I mean, there were a lot of students though that sort of need singles though there too. I think you so, can yeah. believe them. I mean, you're good yeah. at meeting people. You're so yeah. I mean, when I yeah. when I went to this other school, you know, I met a, I met a, a bunch of great people there. No, right? I mean, I still keep in touch with them. You know, I have a buddy from California and a buddy from upstate New York. Any of your friends ever get famous on Instagram? Um, I don't think so, no. Not as famous as Jen Seltzer, well, I can you, tell you that. Uh, oh, really? If you visit the California buddy, we can yeah, hang out. Totally, yeah. That's where yeah. I live. Yeah, you ever got to Cali? Well, Sunny yeah. Los Angeles. Yeah. No, he lives in Villa Park, Orange County. Oh, pretty oh, close. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty still, close yeah, he's about an hour away. You know, he's a really great guy. Mm, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, never want to lose touch with anybody they want to. What's he up with. to out there? Should he be a new friend for me or what? Uh, I don't know. Well, he's mostly my friend, though. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Spencer. Maybe. I thought this was going. Really I, mean, well. I mean, I am a very sensitive person. I can tell I, you that. I'm true. pretty sensitive. Yeah. I try, I well, try are, to be careful with what I say. What are you worried too. about having other friends meet your current friends? Like, no, we'll I'm not talk worried. about you. I mean, I'm not about that at all. I'm not. I'm not I'm not concerned about that. You know, if they were to come and visit me at UConn or I were to come visit them, I mean it's it wouldn't matter though. I mean they're still cool. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, you nothing, would introduce them to other I would introduce people, them, so. yeah. I mean, we would okay. still have a good time. It's not me. I can't right. <laughs> hang yeah. out with no, him. No, no <laughs> comedy trash, as you said. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Did you call me comedy trash before oh, I came? I hope that becomes oh, a new no. thing. No, I don't. I never <laughs> said that. Trash. She's a regular. Whoa, clown. I didn't say that. No. <laughs> hey, no one's in studio. Oh, okay, she's like joking. Oh horror. man, you all like. <laughs> no one of this is the comedy department. Everybody here jokes with me. It's like all my friends at school. Yeah, <laughs> they all mess with me. I'm so used to it. Well, you take it really well, and yeah. you're funny. Too, I do take so it well. Yeah, hey, I, I tend to be funny. Studio. <laughs> Amy's performing tomorrow night at the Stan Comedy Club in New York City. She's performing this weekend at the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver, Colorado. That's my and friend. Stand up for yourself with Amy Miller is happening at the Bumbershoot Festival in Same Seattle right way Labor Day weekend. And on that show will be Dan Soder, Kate Berlant, and Billy Wayne Davis. Go to AmyMillerComedy.com for more information. Hope you can help Soder. <laughs> Soder? Yes. Strangely, yeah. I'm like, oh, I Who's think they're Soder? all sober people. Oh, like, sober. Yeah, yeah. yeah sober. Oh. Dan Sober. Dan Sober. Yeah. He seems to have it so together, though. I don't yeah. know. I'm going to have to dig pretty deep. We'll talk about his dad or whatever. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> you know. Sore spot. Mm. Good to know. Any other tips? <laughs> well, you know, just, you know, I noticed that he and the other guys, the skanks, they fight over Big J. Oh, they yeah. all want Big J as their best friend. It's like bonfire you know? versus the skanks. Yeah, and a really unfair war. Sad. You know, for the skanks. <laughs> but that's how I feel like, you know, it's going to be when when we're up at UConn, when all of us head up there. Yeah. yeah. We're getting a triple. Us three are going to be oh, a triple. Oh, my God. Room. It's going to be awesome. But, oh, my God. I'm going to feel so awkward, to be honest. Yeah. No offense, but I will feel awkward if you guys technically kind of like follow me there. It what would if we be stay cool. Here single? I mean, it would be cool, but, but just like still. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, see why we wouldn't I mean, I would still feel kind of awkward, though. <laughs> Hope I don't get waitlisted. <laughs> oh. You're not going to look at your application. <laughs> oh, come on, Amy. <laughs> you know what? You might not want to see us until you say, I brought a big bag of that herb. He got that oh. reef. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, this is a little bit. And we can start and sell it on campus. Maybe That's a great Molly. It's a great way to yeah, it's, earn it's a good job. bucks. Selling <laughs> marijuana? Yeah. Oh, my God. And Adderall. Adderall? Oh, oh my God. Everyone loves Adderall. No. It's like a painkiller medicine. I think Spencer, someone had one this morning. Sells, <laughs> everybody sells pot in college. Yeah, a lot of people normal. do it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you get caught by that, you're... It doesn't matter. You're screwed. I no. remember caught. I used to Light smoke. Of the cops. I used to smoke weed while I looked in other people's papers, oh. <laughs> and pasted them together. Yeah, cut and paste. That was my thing. Just a little cut and paste. Sorry about this. <laughs> the shake, <laughs> professor. <laughs> Get me some paste. Laughing glue on everything. I'm all, I'm almost done paste. I mean writing <laughs> my paper. <laughs> you just pulled out the Great Gatsby <laughs> and pasted it on no shit, right? Yeah. It's my report. <laughs> I think it speaks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> you can't plagiarize anymore. It's so sad. I know. It's impossible. I can't believe people it. plagiarize now. How do they do it? I don't know. Probably some dark web shit that Chris would know. Like, <laughs> Chris, what are you doing in the dark web? I bet there's papers on there that people exchange for I money. Mostly, but... I see mostly drugs and guns and like weird fucking like cell phone blockers on there. Well, can you check for Spencer if there's any Spencer, academic papers? There I'm going to find can... some academic papers on the email. Too. Oh, no. <laughs> no I'll just email them to you. <laughs> no, I got your official learn... UConn email. No, no, I'm not doing that. Sorry. Not, you're going to get them. No well, matter I don't want to get. I'm not getting. I'm not plagiarizing there because if I <laughs> plagiarize, I get caught. I'm out. But what what, what if your papers do like the next day and you never oh, read anything? Point. Well, and then you go to your email and say, "Chris Stanley, there's a paper I gave." Oh, you gonna you're gonna, you're gonna have to use know. it. That's gonna require drugs. Well, I'm, well I'm, here's the thing though: I'm never gonna do a last minute. What if it happens? Though? Do it first. Then I don't know. Well, <laughs> best laid plans. I'll just Spencer. tell. I, I mean, it, it won't happen. Though. I mean, I, it, you I'm not going to do a last. I'm going to send you a couple papers. You just keep them, <laughs> and just in case, in case uh, of emergency, they might apply. Yeah, to something you need. Well, okay. Why don't you just do this like I used to? Hey, smart girl. Finish working on this for me, would you? I you still have all my college papers. Do you? And it's like kind of pre-internet, so I could just give those to you. Yeah, and also I heard this thing. Do you want to write about like there's actually this thing? Hold on, talk over her. There's actually this thing called. Get louder. If she starts talking. There's actually this website. Now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Go on. No, go on. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Sorry to interrupt there's you. this thing called Grammarly. It's like a website that sort of looks over your papers. I, mean, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that website. No. Yeah, it's like it was like advertising. It says like it helps. It, it it catches like a lot of writing errors or pretty much all writing errors and it also detects plagiarism. Oh. Yeah, but I'm saying I wrote these yeah. papers when the, and they're not anywhere on the internet so I can just give them to you. 
Yeah. I'll ship them out here. Mm. And then you can just use those. Mm, whatever you want. I'll have to. I don't know. If you're writing just about like. change the name from Amy Miller to Spencer Burke. <laughs> Sociological <laughs> theories. Don't forget to do of that. Please. That's going to be awkward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you want to do a paper on bittersweet sympathy, that's up to you. Rap rock. It really did. It fucking freaked everybody out. It came out of nowhere. It was just amazing. What is the feminism in Dawson's Creek? Um, do you know that show, Dawson's Creek? I might have heard about it. I don't think You'll so. You'll probably be watching you gotta You got to update the references, but nobody will catch you. Hmm. Just an option. I don't know. We're all throwing out options. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I if you want the nickname idea. Pasty, that's the, that's the time to get it for yourself. Okay. <laughs> I have it already, just yeah. from my complexion. Though. You know what? You need a little time in the sun. <laughs> I'm getting real leathery. I got the folds. <laughs> it's nice. My friend called it the Roseanne chest yesterday. Oh. <laughs> just looks like a, an important book right between <laughs> the tits. <laughs> I'm sorry I said sorry. tits. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. It's well-aged. <laughs> yeah, well-aged. <laughs> Go find bourbon. <laughs> You got to wear sunscreen, though. You know, it's if you come out to LA and visit uh, yeah. your friend, not me. I, I can't, yeah, I I can't always, hang out with that guy. Always, wear, I always wear sunscreen every, whenever I go to beaches. All right, that's mm. smart. Never go, never go to a beach without sunscreen. And here's the thing: if you don't put sunscreen on and put tanning oil on, do you do you get burned from that? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> it, yeah. I get, I get like a nice base coat. I'll get like a couple burns, and then eventually I have some hi- a higher tolerance, and then I just get tan. You know. I mean, this yeah. Even if you don't put me. sunscreen on, you just use the tanning oil. You, you still get I go, you get burned. Nothing. Yes, for tanning oil. Yeah. yeah, if you just use tanning oil and. And no sunscreen. You can you, get you burnt. Get burnt? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. so I guess people maybe put sunscreen on before the tanning oil. Or, yeah. Or you just yeah. live dangerously. So, I mean, I just usually use sunscreen. I usually get some color. My uh, my actual stuff that I use, it's just called skin cancer. Oh, really? I just that's rub it on. Called? Yeah, it's, it's called nice skin cancer. Crisco. Oh, boy, do I get a nice, toasty oh. quick. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes I'll just put bacon on my shoulders and just, you know, by a, take a nap and wake up and have a little lunch. It'll already be done. Now, Spencer, would you use this? KFC is giving out a new sunscreen, and it is scented like their fried chicken. Oh, my goodness. That so new? it's Yeah, yeah. it's oh. called Extra Crispy. And you're just telling me about it? <laughs> oh, my God. And no. it is a, it's a sunscreen it that's mm. scented. Like oh my KFC, I'll end crispy. up eating my arm. Wow, no way! <laughs> Don't you get hungry on the beach than anywhere oh my else? God. Still, oh yeah, you know? they, yeah. Why? They, they, I don't know. Well, it all depends. You usually either bring lunch or they usually <laughs> serve lunch to you. <laughs> on the so beach, you're, you're doing very well. You yeah. guys when live I went to Punta, lavishly. When you usually go to like the Caribbeans or Mexico, <laughs> when we went to Mexico, they <laughs> serve. Like We're food on the beach, like and we went to Punta Cana. Same thing, you know. You, yeah, you, sure. you can get like a burger or fries on the beach. Like that'd be that'd be a bomb. That'd be great. You just go like this, and they just bring it to you. Just no, you there. There are people there. You you can ask though usually, or sometimes there'll be people that are, will come and ask if ask you want nicely, anything. But if yeah. they don't have what you want, then yeah. they'll say, "I'm sorry." It all depends. This usually, <laughs> I don't know. You no, know, you just respect. Do they take that. husky bucks there? <laughs> no, I asked. I asked for a burger. Fries and a milkshake, and the woman wouldn't give it to me. And I go, why? She goes, I don't work here. I'm just laying on the beach. I said, get it for me. Please. Oh, my God. Get it wow. for me. I'm not great. <laughs> Does your housekeeper and nanny go to the beach with you guys no. sometimes? No. No, they stay in, no. in New York. Yeah. No, we go as a family. Mm. Oh, they're not the part of the family? What? That's the family. <laughs> I don't think the housekeeper's part well, of the family. Oh, yeah, she is part of the family, though. She went. She was been with us um, since since I was 10 and then, well she she's been with us since I was a baby though and then she got another job after I turned 10 oh, oh. But we still keep in touch with her that's so sad yeah, yeah. but it's but it's great though we still keep in touch she's so, still she's still te- she's still family is she gonna visit you in Yukon I don't know but 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 we definitely visit but we definitely <laughs> see her though she comes yeah. to the house usually sometimes nice. are you gonna oh, keep yeah. a tidy room are you gonna keep a nice clean room oh or? yes oh, yeah. 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 how are you gonna do an in inspection do you think I don't know if they're doing it I mean, every they're college gonna do has it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. this other school they did. I didn't realize that other schools they do. Well, wow. what do they do about your beer and drugs? Oh, they well, don't like it. If you're underage, they get pissed. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll it get depends you. on, like, some campuses, dry campus. But if yeah. you're underage on a regular campus, you can be in trouble for it. But if you're over 21, then yeah, I think it could yeah, be. Yeah. Except this other school, they, they, they sometimes, you know, they, uh, the whole, there are some kids that do 
that do um that do marijuana. Well, cool kids. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah cool but they do. Search, some people's yeah. rooms get searched, and then and then or if they have like marijuana or alcohol in the room, they get busted for that. Yeah, right. you know, or sometimes you know people say like we got popped. Oh, oh we, got popped. Popped. We, we got popped. popped. I got popped. We got popped. I got popped in college all the time. We got yeah. popped. Fucking every day. Yeah. Yeah. I never got popped. Yeah. You just gotta lie. They pop my cherry. Yeah. Sometimes over and over. Or unless okay, someone Chris. also will rat you out too. Yeah. It all Ooh. depends usually. Rat I remember in my school, <laughs> they came in and like, uh, the guy had a cane and he started hitting along at that and all the belt buckles had all these polished really? uh, belt buckles that was in and school? polished school. <laughs> yeah. And then they made me stay behind. He was like squirting me with a hose <laughs> and I was like, I got nowhere else to go. <laughs> to go. Oh my it's a tough then, school. Yeah, it was. And then my friends went by on a motorboat and they were like mooning him and stuff. <laughs> and it was like great right until my best friend, he swallowed um, a diamond ring and then hung himself. Oh. But I went back to my girlfriend and I picked her up at the paper factory. Oh my goodness. I just me, carried wow. her out and Joe Cocker was there. <laughs> I oh never my goodness. see any of those people anymore. <laughs> oh, no. You know when you get out of school. It's weird because you know? oh, yeah, I feel yeah. like I know them. Yeah. They're so familiar that stories. Was, I went to plain school. It was called Navy Plain School. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you're not going to rat anybody out, right? No, never. You know I don't want to be a snitch. What happens to snitches? Because you know what they say? What? Snitches get stitches. That's correct. Snitch. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, in my neighborhood, we say the snitches get the bitches. You know what I'm saying? But no, no snitches. No. Snitches. Snitches get stitches. so hot. Yeah. He sings like never a bird. Snitch on, never snitch. <laughs> and then I would see the cops, they go like this. And you know what else? I'm Chris Stanley. What? No. He's always selling things he to people. He is so cool. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I know everything that's happening, and I'll so tell you. attractive. <laughs> I'll tell you everything you want to know. <laughs> what a communicator. <laughs> His honesty. <laughs> Coming soon. Snitches get bitches. Oh, my goodness. But it is cool to squeal a little bit. I'm not going to tell Oh, it isn't? No squealing, Spencer. <laughs> lie that's to protect my... your friends. Yeah. Would you? Would you lie to protect your friends? Depends. Yeah. Depends on the situation. Like, if the RA comes around and they're like, listen, you're a good kid, Spencer. We want to know if your neighbor next door has drugs. And I don't you know. don't like that person. What are you going to say? But you know that, that they have drugs in there. You know that they sell drugs out of there. Personally, I don't know. And I don't know anything about it, though. I mean, I never smelled anything. I mean, but what I would, if you did smell something like skunk weed? I would I would tell them, no, I don't. I haven't smelled anything. No, oh, that's good. You could say like, I, look, I mean, I, I don't know. not my business. I mean, I don't know anything <laughs> about this, though. I mean, I've never been in his room, though. But what if That's you want? Yeah. What if you want to date his girlfriend? Oh. And with him out of the way, okay. I don't know. You know. What well, if they have a picture of one time you were in his room? <laughs> <laughs> then what do you say? Probably, I don't know. I just, I don't know. What if you had a poster up of Jen Selter in your room? Oh my God! Yeah. yeah. Wow. You gonna do that? Probably. I'm not gonna get a Jen Selter. She's poster. like your number what? one. Who's your number one like famous lady? Oh, um, I mean. That you Pretty have. much Megan Fox. Yeah, mm. he's a big yeah. Megan Fox fan. Mm. I love yeah. Megan Fox. I like Michael J. Fox. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had his poster up in my room. <laughs> you all right? Jesus. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Are you all right? Yeah. You got that Clinton call. Sounds <clears throat> guilty. All this shit. <laughs> no, no, never. Oh. Amy Miller's in the studio. She's performing tomorrow night at the Stan Comedy Club well, in New York City. Well, look squealing. No, no, no. Where is she going to be? Let me write it down. <laughs> She'll be performing this weekend at the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver. She will, will she? And her stand up and stand up for yourself with Amy Miller is happening at the Bumbershoot Festival in Seattle, <laughs> Labor Day weekend. Dan Soder, Kate Berland, and Billy Wayne Davis will be uh, on the show. Squeal. <coughs> Enjoy squealing. your stitches. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong oh, with you? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, don't. Was so I quit smoking. You know what? Ago. Here's the thing. <clears throat> As Spencer gets stronger, you're getting weaker. Oh my god, oh. that's what it is. Oh. That's the way for you. The weaker you'll be. Oh, no. mm -hmm. don't Maybe go to UConn. No, oh. <laughs> just stay here, Spencer. If, Seriously, Spencer, why would you go to UConn? If Chris dies, and then I, mean, I gotta they, get it. I gotta get it. I gotta get a degree. They offer you a gig <laughs> full time. Will you drop out of school? If drop it. Oh. So Chris is dead. Yeah. From this cough thing. Yeah, yeah I'm dead. And well, then. Ron goes, 
hey, we need you back full time. You got to quit school. Oh, um, I mean, I, I probably say, I would probably say no, though, but because I still want to get wow. a degree, though. He wants to get a degree. It's I, then I could probably come back here. Yeah. No, yeah. the and, job's and not open in two years. Oh. Look, you'll come back and you'll be our boss. Okay. <laughs> it's so probably like, true. Get, yeah, it wouldn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> probably two weeks he could be our boss. <laughs> we need one. Well... Uh, Amy, you got to talk somewhat today. You were I able to, it. yeah. <laughs> and you did something Rachel Feinstein has never done. Oh, no, this is life. great. I'm, I'm a big Spencer fan, so this yeah. is perfect. I got to know you a lot, and then maybe I'll see you again. I don't know. I okay. feel like we all got to know Spencer today. <laughs> Me oh, God, too. Yes. A lot of information. Yeah. Don't you guys kind of feel like this is like the breakfast club, and it's just like all this like truth is coming out? And Can we I just, just tell like, you getting... something? Mess with the boy, you get the horns. <laughs> Oh, because I'm the principal. Which one says that? Oh, the principal. principal. He was my favorite. Yeah, he was. That dude is so cool. (laughs) I got you for two weeks. No, two months. Two months. By the way, did you see? uh, Since we're doing '80s stuff, did you see the Mickey Rourke stuff today? We should do that before we end. So Mickey Rourke, he looks so crazy these days. But Lenny Dykstra tried to be a, a snitch with him and said he earned 30k, and Mickey just lost his shit. Just watch this. Look how different he looks. No, I wouldn't fight him. I would knock the living shit out of him just the minute that I see him. You punk ass motherfucker. You lying sucker. And Lenny, let me tell you something. When I see you, it's not even going to be hello. I'm going to knock your teeth out again, motherfucker. I mean, what? He said some, like. He said I, he gave me 30 grand. And I swear on my. I have a brother that I love more than anybody else. And I swear on my brother Joseph. And I swear on my grandmother, that bitch never gave me 30 grand. He never gave me shit. And you know what? For him saying that, if I see this motherfucker, I'm going to knock all his fucking teeth out again. You understand? You hear me, Lenny? You punk-ass bitch motherfucker. So you think he's trying to avoid you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I would. <laughs> when you get those spit balls in the side of your mouth, does that mean your mouth is dry? Uh, I think it is, yeah. yeah. But you know what? There's soon. something still yeah. great about him. So I still kind of feel him make you roar. Okay. Know. He reminds it's me of your much. uncles and your cousins, the way he looks. <laughs> <at this time. laughs> I'm, I'm still like, at this age, we're still looking to someone to get even with. <laughs> it's those beefy hands he's got. Yeah, he does yeah. have oh. fucking oh. fingers. Young Mickey Rourke, though. Like, Jesus. Gorgeous. Insane. Yeah. So sexy. Like, so, so sexy. The sexiest. And then what changed it for him? It didn't change for oh, me. The 30 grand that, right? still, still happening? <laughs> still happening? He's pretty tough. Yeah. <laughs> like a leather collared shirt. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, small yeah. brand. <laughs> what was the, the sexiest of all early Mickey Rourke? Pope of Greenwich Village. Yeah, that's, he was great. 100%. But, but what about that ice cube scene, though? Yeah. Ice cube on the tummy. Great summertime movie. <laughs> yeah, what was that? What was that? That wasn't him. That's not Mickey Rourke. No, no. Did no. Ice Cube nine the... and a half weeks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, oh. nine and a half weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was the first kind of soft core. Oh yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah, with um. You know who I was? I was like, oh, you're Kim thinking of Spike. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I think she. I was thinking she was thinking Spike Lee. My favorite one was Angel Heart, though. You're wrong. Remember how crazy he was in Angel Heart, and he was with oh, Lisa yeah. Bonet. That was a very sexy little I scene know. too. And you the know, two of them together. Interracial. Two of the like most attractive humans. Yeah. Mm. And something happened. When he's getting ready. It's a summer wind in Pope Greenwich Village. I think that's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Spencer, would you be in an interracial relationship? (laughs) An international relationship? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Interracial. (laughs) Interracial? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Oh. Oh, sweet. Okay. What ethnic? (laughs) What ethnic group? Kind of turned you on a little bit. Um. Mine is white. Usually white. I like white. Yeah. Nice white. white. Yeah. I'll go. Get over here, whitey. Yeah. I'll be like this. Where are you going so fast, Whitey? Are you under a lot of pressure to date a Jewish girl? What do you mean? Oh, are you Jewish? Yeah, I am. Does your mom want you to date a No, I'm not, in, I'm not under any pressure, though. I mean, I just want to <laughs> do what's maybe right for me, though. Any color of the rainbow? It all depends, usually. Yeah. Do you want to raise your kids uh, Jewish or Muslim? No, Jewish. Mm. Not Muslim. Mm. 
I kind of like Muslim kids because they're like the whole ISIS thing. Yeah. And they bring that up. I think it's cute. It's cute when they're young. Sure. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. When they're young. Yeah, when it's when, just play dynamite. Oh, my God. Love that's those. not right. That I would say it's not cute, though, because you never well, know. If it was pretend sure. dynamite. Sure. I, mean, it, I mean, it's still, it's they can't pretend that. They should get in trouble for that, I feel well, like. Well, when they come in, they just that's run nice. in the living room like, because boom me. Here's the thing, though. Boom me. Here's the You're thing. Like, when, um, I think I told you this a while ago, but yeah, when Omar me. Mateen, yeah. I heard on the radio when Omar Mateen was involved in that shooting, um, <laughs> and it was during yeah. 9-11, um, Omar Mateen's classmate said that when the plane struck in the World Trade Center, Omar Mateen Teen was like imitating them. He was like going. He was like right. sort of imitating them. Kids, right? Yeah, when he was like, he was in high school actually. I oh. think. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's dangerous. It's still it was rough great. for me because I was in both towers that day. Oh yeah. 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 How did you do that? What okay. happened that day? This is typo. I don't know. I left early. So and you did still, you really? You still yeah. get booked. <laughs> yeah. <It's crazy>. uh-huh. <laughs> <Not> weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's uh-huh. Weird business. Yeah, it is. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> well, we got to wrap this up. Amy Miller's been in the studio. She's performing tomorrow night at the Stan Comedy Club in New York City. Then she'll be performing this weekend at the High Plains Comedy Festival in Denver, Colorado. And then her show, Stand Up For Yourself with Amy Miller, is happening at the Bumbershoot Festival in Seattle, Labor Day weekend. On the show will be Dan Soder, Kate Berlant, and Billy Wayne Davis. Go to amymillercomedy.com for all of their information. And where will Spencer be appearing? Spencer will be appearing at UConn. <laughs> at husky next, at, Bucks. He'll be guys for some Husky Bucks. What? You bucks, can't bucks, say, bucks. You can't oh, say that. Fucked it up. <laughs> All right, relax. Say ask for. Oh, oh, what the fuck? Oh, you got it. That's going in the final evaluation. A what? Oh. Your, your little comment there. Oh, I, I, I think I just. You know you're going to give me. He's just right joking. He doesn't still, write anything. He's kidding, and you uh, know it. Look, I wrote down, I'm a hard ass, and then Vito and Ron. With Not wise. Uh-huh. Yeah. No wisdom. No wisdom. I'm right that but down. in a so good way, though. Yes, in a good way. Well, Vito has, has just man, as right? much, much as you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You should know that. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> Vito, equally wise. Yeah. you are on the same level. I think of us that way. <laughs> like, a lot of time, if I have a big problem, I'll go to him. And I'm like, Vito, we've got to come up with an answer right now. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? All right. We'll see all you guys again in 1974. Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Yeah!